here as far as the market is concerned, accelerating downside currently for the futures. We're not yet uh, flirting with uh, break even on the day, but back to 0.4 right now for the S&P, uh, still 0.7 for the NASDAQ, but pretty ugly day for uh, Apple across the board. Just made a new day low here on this DOJ note. Um, there's Apple right now, 4.2% here. It's been a long time since Apple's had a 4% kind of a day to the downside, 171 holding as support right now. If you zoom out, 170 and then 165 uh, bigger levels. But uh, yeah, really no upside at all today. It's just been straight down uh, for Apple all day long. Not going to be a good day for the overall market when Apple just goes uh, straight down. Although, as I said, we are still uh, positive for the NASDAQ on the day. There's uh, our DDT. Still 50%, but uh, trying to roll over once again here. Uh, $50 trying to hold it as support. What a move that was out of the gate this morning. Uh, all the way up to 58 bucks for Reddit. I guess it was just after lunch, so um, early afternoon for uh, Reddit on its debut. More than that now, but yeah, Apple leads the way here on the negative train. Uh, pretty ugly day right across the board for Apple, as I said, right out of the gate. Google following suit downside. Uh, the rest of these, however, are more than making up for it, as you can see, including uh, Broadcom. They're a huge day to the upside. NVIDIA, uh, yet another day to the upside. AMD, Qualcomm, Intel, Microsoft, Meta helping to the upside as well. A lot of strength in banks, it's worth mentioning. Uh, we were talking about that this morning. It was on uh, the watch list. We were talking about it in the first hour. Were these banks going to be a buy coming off what happened yesterday and some of this talk from uh, Fed Chair Powell and, uh, you know, being more dovish than hawkish yesterday, indicating that, you know, it's probably going to be June. It looks like anyways, it's going to be June that we get this first cut, maybe some more activity coming back into the banking sector as a result. Um, these as well. Uh, worth noting, some of the defensive type names, uh, big day up, upside, GE, Caterpillar, AMAT, uh, to name a few here, Deer as well, nicely positive, energy names over here, nicely positive on the day, uh, Tesla downside, notable name, uh, 1.5%. Um, yeah, major index is higher. We got Micron this morning as well. That was top of the watch list. We'll flip things around, though, and we'll talk about Reddit first because what a debut it's been. Uh, back downside right now, as I said, trying to roll over a little bit here, guys, trying to hold 50 bucks. But wow, what a move that was out of the gate here. 47 all the way up to 58 for Reddit. All right, welcome everybody. Um, yeah, thanks Brandon, thanks Adara. Thank you Sharif uh, for the midday. Um, all right, yeah, so Reddit was an exciting one. Oh, we yeah. should have, as per usual, we said yesterday uh, that Astera Labs that we would have wound up losing if you take the opening print on that trade. But today, Obi, yeah. come over to the chart different. here. Yeah, distinctly different day. Um, as right there, there is the opening print for Reddit at $47. We don't have that at all. Uh, so we'll slap a fail on that. We were sitting right here. I mean, I was reading the tap. The problem is the tap was 50. Then it was 48, 49, 50. Then it was 48. Then it was like 46, 50. Um, so I was thinking that, you know, it was coming back in a little bit. So they had enough demand to post it possibly coming out at 50, and then they brought it out at 48, and then it went down to 46.50. So I'm like, okay, you know, it seems like there might be some selling heading into this, but then no, uh, opens up and boom, just blasts right off to the upside. So we always say one thing, and we talked about this again on the, on the, main sh on the midday show, um, and then again back with Sharif, and, and that was just like, the only thing that I thought was really safe was kind of like a VWAP pullback. So this very first pullback that happened, you know, we went long and then we pulled, touched out to 58 bucks. Again, not really a big exhaustion volume or anything like that, but came back in and then once it came in, uh, that's when we were just sitting here at 53 uh, because at that point view up was 52. So it's like, you know, if you're not here to take a dollar risk. Um, and then we go boom to the upside right there and then we make three. So that was 53 up to 56 in one, two minutes, Obi, straight bounce. And that's what was trading uh, on during the IPO, of course, nicely done to the upside. Then we bought some in, um, got out there. See, this is that risk that we talked about. We bought it at $50.25. We got out at 49. It looks like we, a little bit of a slippage there, 49.30 or so, as we were trying to get out at 49.75. Then we bought that dip. Got a piece out, now we're holding to see if we can get back up to the upside. So yeah, pretty good day overall for Reddit. Uh, back and forth there. The only thing I wanna say to everybody, cause I heard this yesterday about Astera. You're gonna be on your way home. You're gonna be sitting around the dinner table, probably not my dinner table, but you know, your own, or you know, maybe if you're speaking about stocks at dinner, uh, maybe you should think about something else. But um, 
you're going to hear that, oh my God, Reddit was up 50% today. Like, I can't believe I didn't buy it, you know? You can't, it's not up 50%. You know, it's a, it was, this number is based on that $34 offering price that they priced out yesterday. So unless you're in on that price, then today Reddit just kind of looks normal. I mean, huge move up, huge move back. And realistically, guys, we're now up $3 off of its opening price. So that's really the difference on how much you're up or down on Reddit today. And it bugs Neil and I because often you'll hear that you go, oh, it was a really successful starting opening day for ARM. You know, it was up 75%. And then we're like, huh? Felt like it was sell pressure all day and it was down three bucks. Mm -hmm. But because they was so wrongly priced and the rich get richer down there at $34, this is the story right here at 50. So we'll hold, see if it breaks that bottom. But uh, what were your experiences? Yeah, no, it was pretty, uh, pretty wild. I was definitely uh, not well prepared. I kind of ran to my desk as it, as it opened. And uh, yeah, so 50, 50, I think 50 was nice. The build up into 50, that's kind of what I got in on. Uh, not nowhere near what I wanted. So uh, a little disappointing performance in that. But yeah, it kept on going. I punched out pretty, pretty uh, early as well. I think uh, the, the, the system, um, uh, what was it, the more, uh, more live trading uh, kind of had my position stuck for a little bit, but I did get out underneath that 52, but it went all the way to 57s, and uh, yeah, a little some uh, some distinct selling happening in the 57s, 56s. So I just got up and walked away. I was like, yeah, well, uh, I was ill prepared for it, but uh, you know what? The, it's not it's not over yet. It still definitely has a lot more umph left in it. But that opening drive. Uh, through that 50, that was uh, that was definitely mint. And then take a look, 50 is kind of very interesting. Still, we're still kind of doing a bit of a vo uh, bit of a uh, orbit around uh, around that 50 level uh, on uh, on Reddit. But yeah, let us uh, let us know how you guys traded. Did you guys participate in this uh, in this move? Are you guys waiting? What's your plan on Reddit? This 50 uh, 50 dollar level seems interesting as of right now. We're just holding on to it, but let's see where it goes. You got to remember this thing. This thing uh, they were pricing it a little bit lower. It kind of popped up. We opened yep. up a higher than than what what we were supposed to open up at, and we got that nice strong push into 58. So let's see if we can if we can uh, make some directional moves, or we just chop around sideways here. But uh, something we don't want to take our eyes off on, uh, off of is Apple, Sean. No, Apple definitely has a yeah, catalyst we'll talk about uh, that. uh, that's, uh, that seems like it's kind of uh, pulling the market around as well. Again, Apple not being the top constituent anymore, but definitely still up there at number two. So it de definitely has a little bit of uh, uh, weighing as well. But yeah, that 171 holding right now. Let's see what we got. Day's not over. The bell has not rung. There will definitely be more opportunities, Sean. All right, just be aware they're talking about this uh, DOJ suit on CNBC right now for Apple. So good timing. Let's talk about Apple. Uh, right back to 171 right now. Actually, at, uh, day lows, essentially, if you missed it. Uh, a few more details coming out over the midday. You guys were talking about this a little bit. But um, yeah, here we go. Accelerating downside four and a quarter now for Apple. Oh yeah, Apple was down into the right, Brendel. Very weak on the day. Uh, here's the scope of the lawsuit. Um, it's going to focus on several areas. Uh, the first one is Apple restricting access to third parties for hardware and software related to the iPhone. And the App Store may also be involved. We know they take 30% off the top for anything bought on there. And whether or not they will allow uh, the, uh, the, um, the software providers to go and uh, allow customers to bill on a different website so they can use different, um, different billing processes there. We'll have to wait and see. That's part of the thing in Europe as well. Uh, if you go out to the uh, daily time frame, it was this low 165 that we were eyeing on this move down that uh, kind of held as support. But uh, might be right back there in a matter of days here, guys, for Apple. All right, uh, yeah, thanks for that uh, little brief story there about Apple. I mean, what a crazy day it's been here today. We were so happy just yesterday. Remember, we were like, oh, yeah, we'll get out of some of our Apple in and around 180. Well, that actually uh, came pretty close. Uh, we should have got out yesterday in all of that uh, nonsense up here, up to 178, 179. But yeah, we recently bought some back down here at, at literally 169, like 25 or something. We got a great opening print somewhere. I don't know where it was, but anyways. Um, all right, so Apple, look at this. This is what happens. The DOJ is coming after you, man. You better hide as, 
anywhere you can. Uh, and it looks like Apple's trying to hide out down here near 171. I mean, there was some protection down here. It looks like there's some support. Obviously, things have changed now uh, as we get this um, you know, protectionist view. And uh, what we did on Apple, we didn't trade it at all. And we talked about this earlier. I feel bad about trading it. We're up today, and it's, it's going to be fine. But it's, this was the missed opportunity. Forget about what happens right away at 9.30. It's this move up here. If you were thinking short, and again, I don't, I'm not, I don't even really have it on the radar today. It wasn't on this, and we talked about it at 8.30, at 9 o'clock, that I wasn't really super concerned or, did Reddit just go down there? Yep. What? All right. So we just got taken out. I just said like, oh, I think Reddit could maybe go up like we were just um, three dollars in the money, basically, not just, but about twenty minutes ago, three dollars in the money, and then it came right back down. That's wild. And we were, we're kind of playing with not, like this was a much better trade there because we we actually based that out. Right now we're just trying to catch that bottom. I thought maybe there was going to be a bottom in Reddit. Hey Fabian, where are all these Dgens, man? They got. I thought they're supposed to be coming in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're all yeah, downloading stuff, too. he said right now. Um, okay, well, on that note, uh, right now, yeah, Reddit, nicely done to the downside. But anyways, Obi, long yeah. story short, we went long here at, at 72. We actually able to make money. We're going to be net positive going long right now, but there it is. Look what's happening right now with Bitcoin. Um, nice little move to the downside, and I just want to show everybody. Yesterday, we lost way too much on iBit because we got excited about it. This time, we got in and we just got out. So, small hit, but an L nevertheless, as uh, Bitcoin's starting to go to the downside. And I'm just hearing in my ear, Mr. Jamie Dimon getting involved again right now. Mm. Apparently, uh, JP Morgan talking about, I don't know if it's him or an analyst or whatever, but mentioning that Bitcoin is, is well overbought right now. So I'd say money's coming out of my wallet, not dropping into it right now, uh, as there goes crypto all the way back down to the downside. So, you know, I just wish we talked about this already. You know, just let it, let it cook, man. Let, let this thing go down uh, as much as it yeah, wants it to. It'll, it'll, it'll be back up. But I just feel that all this like, oh, it's overbought, it's oversold. That's a nice opinion. And I just don't think Bitcoin should be falling this much on little opinions like that. But that's just what I'm hearing in my ear. So we'll wait on that. But yeah, JP Morgan, like, you know, there's a hurricane coming. No, there's not. Uh, we're, we hate crypto, yet we're developing a coin in the back. There's like, there's a whole bunch of stuff like this. So um, I would say Who if you're going to trust? trust anybody, we got to trust people that actually trade crypto. And we'll wait to see if there's any news from Cointelegraph or something like that. But that's a story I'm hearing. Yeah, no, uh, definitely um, some crazy action on, on the Reddit. Uh, Apple as well, DOJ problems. Uh, definitely, again, watching that back down into 71, trying to trying a little bit of a little bit of a cheeky uh, cheeky long there. You can see the NQ uh, kind of uh, drop back into this consolidation that we had in the pre market and uh, wick back up into that uh, or trying to wick back up into that 18.6. So the 18.7 to 18.6 seems to be a little bit of an interesting pocket there on uh, on the NQ. But yeah, Apple definitely uh, taking a strong move off that DOJ. Uh, trouble there. Uh, let's talk about Micron. <laughs> um, just stalled out once again at the top, uh, kind of rolling over as well. Uh, huge move though, still holding on nicely. Held 110 there a couple of times out of the gate this morning, initially at the open, and then on a retest as well. We're back to the highs. So uh, Micron, if you missed it, uh, nice beat for their earnings report. Yeah, big beat, Brendo. Revenue increased 58% year over year. It's about 5.82 billion. Uh, they turned a profit while they 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 swung a loss last year at this time. That was above analyst expectations. The guidance comes in fantastic. They're guiding 6.4 to 6.8. Uh, billion dollar uh, revenue um, for the next quarter. That would be a 76% year over year increase from Q1 2023, Brendo. So all the right check marks beside its name. Yeah, right spot, right time. Uh, I did mention it before, but uh, Frank Caberna coming up this afternoon. Lots to discuss, obviously, with uh, Frank uh, once again today. Uh, remember, Fetcher Powell again tomorrow morning at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, we'll get comments from uh, Fetcher Powell. I think it is, though, a He's just giving opening remarks at this event, so it might just be like a prepared speech, but we'll see. Yeah, it's probably just, exactly, that's what I was going to say. It's probably like a fireside chat, you know what I mean? Grab a coffee, chill out, see what the guys try to say, and then eventually we'll find out from him as well when he calls into Trader TV Live, and then we figure, oh, geez, oh. just missed it. Damn. She was up this morning, 5.30. For a game? 
practice. Practice. Yeah, right. we don't play games at 5:30, my guy. But um, uh, yes, sometimes we practice. will. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, yay, sports. sports! What is your favorite sport? I think in terms of like the one that if I you play, say basketball. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, 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 basketball. basketball definitely. All right, all right. I like basketball yeah. too. Um, all right. Oh, don't get me started about the. E no, I'm joking. No, no. Esports yeah. is awesome. Yeah. I, you know, I love esports yeah. for sure. Trader TV Live used to sponsor an esport team. Really? Which one? I have no idea. Oh, okay, nice. Um, okay, so what are we <laughs> talking about? Uh, but we did, we did. Um, all right, so anyways, uh, all the way to the downside here. Uh, we'll find out whatever the best one was, was what it was. Um, no, but so we bought Reddit. So I, I read it. Hello. A micron. Look, look where we got out. You want to talk about, like, honestly, some days we get great wicks. Some days we get horrible ones. And I was like, ah, you know what? We'll buy against VWAP because we said any pullbacks into VWAP we want to buy, right? So we bought this right there. This is right when we went off the air. We talked about it. Remember, uh, you were short. I, I went long, and it was like, oh, nice trade. So we got that out right there. That was a nice trade. That was for $1.20. So we actually got to top. So top to bottom there, so it's all good, right? Then it comes back to the 50 period. I buy that every time. All right, but we buy in small because we're waiting for VWAP. Then all of a sudden it cranked through VWAP and we wound up, because this was only at 110.83. So we actually put it at 110.50 into this area, hoping that, hey, if we break VWAP and we get this print, hopefully it does bounce back up. It did. But we didn't take it out because you know why? We're thinking maybe it can go back up here, which it winds up doing. But then it winds up breaking 110. And of course, I don't have any patience for it. I put the stop order out. It gets out at 110.90 and then, uh, sorry, 109.90 for about a 30 or 40, 50 cent hit actually. Boom to the upside after that. So we will be right on micro, but I want to buy this dip. I'll buy this into one. We might get long soon. I put a bid down here at 111.25 into this area. Let's see if it holds 111. Then if not, maybe get out somewhere around 110.60, something like that, and then probably make a bottom wick again. But I really like a pullback into these names. I want to play strength. I don't want to be shorted. I want to be long. We just got to find the area, and we did screw that up the first time. Yeah, I think uh, Micron, definitely a, a strong move off, uh, off the open there. If you had the short, uh, kind of uh, licks, licks those, uh, not the pre-market high, but pretty much that consolidation uh, highs just going into the open there and then flush to the downside. So I did kind of uh, try to attempt at, uh, at a little bit of a long and then a little bit of a short. And then I was like, yeah, no, I'm not really doing anything meaningful here. So I kind of uh, left the ticker, but it seems like we did reclaim a little bit of VWAP here on top of that 110. So 109 uh, was 109 half and then 110 making some uh, making some higher higher lows and potentially some higher highs as well but uh yeah that day high right here at that 114 half definitely definitely or just underneath that 114 half pre-market high is 114 half on micron but uh, a little bit of a sideways range there on earnings day one micron that smoked i was just noting here uh lee is not good why are you nope. saying uh-oh ramin Oh, okay. Um, all good. Uh, eight and a quarter. It was definitely the other way around this morning. We were talking about the possibility of uh, another two days in a row to the upside here for Lee Auto, but um, yeah, not the case. Uh, 76,000 to 78,000 down from 100,000 to 103,000. That's not good when you're talking about uh, EV deliveries. So yeah, we gapped up this morning early on the pre-market, but got absolutely crushed. Yeah, well, the market has a way of remembering what you did last time. And last time they reported their uh, increase in sales, it was up 173.5%. So if you set that kind of standard, you better hold up to it. Look, management guided 100,000 to 103,000 EVs for the coming quarter. They're not going to make that. We're not talking about 70,000 or so EVs. So, you know, that big $1.8 billion that they turned a profit in 2023 may be a little bit less in 2024. At least that's what management is guiding, Brendo. Yeah, a lot going on uh, today elsewhere. Uh, so, understandably, might not have been top of the list for people today, but um, this thing was pretty wild if you were watching it this morning. Um, so not watching it, but I, I, I'll, I'll go over there in one second. I just want to tell everybody I did get back into Bitcoin right here because I wanted to have a look to see like what levels were sort of potentially a bouncing level. So this time yesterday um, in and around this, uh, this afternoon, you know, we danced around right here. That's 65,000. So I was thinking to myself, self, 
let's just go long into here. So that's what we did. So we just got, oopsies, we just got a nice little dip buy into iBit right now. So we did just get back into it. So there's that bottom. We're gonna try to respect about $37 on iBit right now. We're just long at 37.23. So not much to talk about on this other than that's the play until we break that bottom. So we went down there, we tested it, we had this move yesterday. The reason why I think it's important to trade Bitcoin and, and especially, not important to trade Bitcoin, but just important to look at some of these levels is because we did yesterday, was it yesterday? Yeah, so we had this move down there yesterday and we bottomed out and then boom, it just took out these highs. We thought we had some negative news on Ethereum yesterday and then it just ripped all the way, right? And so we'll have to watch out to see if that is possible one more time here on iBit. So um, that's the trade that I'm looking for, iBit. I did not look at Li, Xpeng, Neo, or anything today. We have multiple bangers though on Tesla and we can address that, but do you have anything on Li Auto? Uh, nothing too much. Again, we, we were talking about this one this morning, and yeah, not not the top name on my uh, on my watch, but definitely in play with uh, with the move that it's been having uh, over the past uh, over the past mo over the past morning session. Right, um, thirty two comes in, and then pretty much sideways off uh, off the uh, off the morning drive there. So holding it in and around VWAP. But yeah, the only really uh, kind of strong move there it had with volume was just off the open thirty one to thirty two and some change can't really get past this consolidation that we kind of had in the pre-market and then uh, still kind of uh, I guess it's just consolidating right now uh, where will it go who knows but uh, definitely a move nonetheless but uh, XPEV yeah I didn't really look at XPEV either XPEV to the downside uh, Tesla I know that you talked about Tesla Tesla to the downside as well but it, it's interesting to see that LI is actually holding up not really looking as heavy as some of these other uh, constituent or constituents in the EV sector, I guess, if you want to call it. But uh, yeah, Reddit as well, uh, sorry, Reddit, Rivian as well, um, a little bit to the downside there. So it seems like LI is holding its own uh, relative to all of the other EV tickers as of right now. But uh, again, my eyes were not on it. There are other names definitely more in play. All right, uh, we saw on that sector board when we came on at 2 o'clock there, banks very, very strong today right across the board. We were talking a little bit about uh, financials in general this morning, if you're with us in the pre-market coming off what happened again yesterday with the Fed. Very, very dovish comments um, from Fed Chair Powell yesterday, kind of shrugging off this recent little blip as far as inflation is concerned, um, saying that we are still moving in the right direction and things are still progressing towards a condition in which they're going to be able to cut interest rates. And, you know, we're going to have Frank coming on here in a few minutes. Um, he's going to talk about it. But, I mean, it's back above 70% as far as June is concerned for uh, cuts. So it looks like that's yeah. going to be the first one. Yeah, and it'll be better for them, too, because they'll have more mortgage demand. They won't, pay, they won't have to pay as much out in interest on the savings accounts and these other uh, cash uh, or, sorry, uh, money market products. But, look. JPM up 1%, Schwab up two and uh, three quarters, Goldman Sachs up four and a quarter. It's been a fantastic day for financials. Morgan Stanley up 2%, so we'll keep eyes on this. I expected this, though, after yesterday. Yeah, so. if you zoom out, I mean, the whole market rallied after the Fed yesterday, but uh, the bank's still pretty strong into the close as well. All right, uh, agreed on, on all those, man. I mean, it's been a great, great little moment for banking stock. This is funny. Shout out to Fabian. I'm going to talk about SoFi in a minute and how, what a waste uh, of a time that was. Shout out to Fabia. This is funny. Now possible, this just in on Reddit. Now possible to lose money directly with Reddit stock instead of just losing based on Wall Street bets <laughs> advice. So that is now in now on nice. Reddit. So thanks, Fabian. I tweeted that out. Um, so thank you for that one, Fabian, as we'll zoom back here and get back to 100%. But um, I thought that was fun. So let's, uh, you know, have some fun around here as we, we talk about that all the time. Um, all right. So, yeah, this is part of the reason why we went long so far. We were very, very patient with SoFi. We're up on SoFi, but it's not doing anything, and we're really not up anything. So we bought this first dip into 750. We talked about liking that dip. Came back in today. We, we knew Anthony Noto was going to be on CNBC um, and, and doing the tour around. He talked about their latest offering that they had and that it was based on strength. They wanted to, I mean, wanted to raise some capital there. Uh, SoFi was up 3 or 4% um, earlier, I guess. Uh, maybe not that much, maybe 2%. 2 uh, and now we're just right back down to the bottom. So trading unlike any other of the banks today and just going to the downside. I really don't, don't think that that's going to be the right stock. Like here's Robinhood on no news up 2.5%. 
you know? So it's just like, go back and forth with these banks. I, this is why I say, and the only bank I'm holding in, it's small because we talked about that we got out of this already uh, in the long-term account is JP Morgan. So uh, just keep staying with the best. JP Morgan's now five or six straight days up, barely a red candle as you continue to go to the upside right now. So nicely done here. JP Morgan continues to rip. I like the bank stocks. We'll talk about Tesla when we get back. Yeah, some, uh, some of the, uh, I guess, uh, payment tickers on watch as well with the banks running with uh, the way they are. We kind of covered some PayPal in the morning. And uh, yeah, what did PayPal do off of the open? A little bit of a continuation, a little bit, quite strong of a continuation off of what we did going into the close yesterday, coming right back in and holding some of those, uh, some of those prices off of yesterday, ripping right back up and holding VWAP for majority of the session now, and then now we're kind of uh, trading below. And I don't know, we were looking at uh, a, couple, a couple of banks as well. Um, I think, uh, what was it, X, we can take a look at XLF, right? So that'll give us a good perspective of uh, the financial uh, sector right there. And yeah, XLF doing quite well. Again, looking kind of similar there, strong move into the close yesterday and a bit of uh, uh, continuation, and then holding VWAP as of right now in around that 42 mark on XLF. So yeah, the bank's definitely strong. All right. What do you got? All right, guys, we've been talking about pullbacks all week. Tomorrow we finish off the lesson by talking about beware of fake outs. Pullbacks are often retracements. Fake outs are re trend reversals. We'll be talking about that and how to trade tomorrow with Adair and I at 11. So you know what? I just, uh, oh, well, he just got, um, Bears were supposed to just got rid of a comment there because, or maybe it wasn't a thing. Someone said SoFi is trash, and then someone said, Sean, just get out of SoFi. So you know what? I actually think that that's right. So we'll just get out where we got in these last pieces. It was just down here to 37.38. We'll take a move back up here into the 50 period moving average and just call it a day on SoFi. I mean, it is a waste of my time. It's a waste of energy. We talk about preserving the mental, especially with my guy over here. Oh, yeah. um, and it's just like, why am I going to look at this and see it in my blotter and sit there and be like, what am I gonna do with this when who cares? I don't need to do anything with it. We have bigger fish to fry. What's up to Naveed in the chat here? He wants me to talk about Nvidia. Why no NVIDIA talk? Well, we will get to it. We do that rundown every single day. We do it at the open to try to give traders an idea of some of the names that we'd be trading, some of the ideas that we have. We do have the sticky note and, and the watch list all available. So you guys can go uh, look at all of that. Look, NVIDIA was a monster today. There's no doubt about that. I, I mean, gave, gave a lot of different styles of trade an opportunity to trade today. Like if you're, if you're shorting weakness, or not shorting weakness, but shorting tops, I mean, this top right there that was made right away, right off open, was 926.50. Well, look what just happened right there. That's 926.50, almost to the knot right there. Uh, hit it, I think it was maybe even, right to the penny, uh, another top, right to the, within a dollar of that top. And then just again right now, within another $2 of that top. So I feel that if you're gonna be a short trader here today, you had many opportunities to win uh, quite quite extensively here on NVIDIA because like if you go short here, let's just take the last example here. If you go short at 24, giving yourself $2, well, your first out would be about that $2 mark, which is right there. Then you got a huge drop down giving you 10. Um, I'm gonna sneeze, Obi, so yeah, no go over to Obi for a second and I'll be right back. Do, Sean. And uh, yeah, we're just or catching not. a little bit of a... Maybe it. All right, cool, thank you. Um, 18.6, catching a bit of a, a, bit of a bid there. Um, and uh, what is this, 53.06-ish. Uh, 53, area on the ES. So yeah, we're catching a little bit of a bid. Where does that reflect? Um, Softy, Softy's a little bit of a bid as well. Amazon, I saw somebody in the chat asking, I forget who it was, they were like, Ovi, are you short 180 on Amazon? I have not really taken a look at Amazon today, my friend. So uh, we can take a look right now, real quick, on, real as quick. to what uh, Amazon has been up to here. Uh, yeah, so we did kind of push that 180 off the open. That was kind of interesting. I think 188 all-time highs in and around that area. It is building up into that, uh, into that place. But pretty much sideways uh, for, for most of the day there. It does seem like 79 is a bit of an interesting level as we've bounced off of there uh, three times now and holding above yesterday's kind of strength there. Again, with FOMC, 
excuse me, coming in real strong. It seems like a few tickers have kind of continued the move off the open today and holding above some of their prices. So it's interesting to see Softy kind of doing the same as well. Apple obviously distinctly different due to, uh, uh, again, they have, uh, they have DOJ news, they're being investigated, so maybe a little bit of trouble there. But what's going on with Google here? Google kind of giving back a lot of its, uh, a lot of, well, pretty much all of its move off the FOMC from yesterday. So definitely some, uh, some strong reversion there. Can't really hold VWAP. So you can see how distinctly different this acted off of, off of the open there. I was definitely not involved, not, didn't have eyes on, but Google relatively weak uh, to, compared to some of the other constituents here. And NVIDIA, yeah, a little bit sideways. Uh, I don't know if, uh, I don't know if uh, uh, our friend Compressor X is still in that, uh, in that trade there, but it seems like we kind of bottomed out on uh, NVIDIA around 904, 905-ish area right here. So uh, yeah, so take a look at that. So a nice strong push all right off the open. You hold uh, this, uh, what is this, yesterday's kind of uh, highs and then you rip right back up. So pretty much sideways there. So a very wide range, 925s to 905s, and then it's, it's done it, uh, what, once, twice, and maybe attempted it for a third time, but we are making relatively higher lows. So I have no idea where this is gonna go, but it looks pretty much sideways to me. But definitely a lot of opportunity if you're looking is what I'm realizing there. It's just like, uh, we were talking about kind of like, um, what do you call it? We were talking about kind of like hunting uh, last time, last time I was on. So if you're kind of waiting, oh wow, there goes Reddit to the downside. Oh, really? um, but I yeah, you're, you're you're just you're, you're kind of stalking the ticker. You're looking for opportunities. Maybe you're stalking the tape. Uh, I think that's definitely a good look there. Getting stopped out of uh, Apple as well. Again, like I said, I try to cheek you long um, on uh, on something that's trending strong to the downside on top of that uh, 171. But clearly, it is not working. It is still to the it is still going to the downside, making fresh lows as of right now. 171 was a little interesting, but there goes some quadung, some teleportation to the downside. 45s coming in on Reddit. Oh boy, I'm gonna wait for a pop. All right, so I want to thank everybody. We did do a walk and talk uh, earlier today. I, I don't know if it's up on Instagram or not. I'll have to double check. Uh, but right now, we did put it up here on Twitter. So thank you, everybody, for watching. That's about a minute. We talked about execution issues and things like that. So um, we are now, and I just remembered it because we're now back uh, and ready to rock and roll. So um, yeah, anyways, iBit just had a nice little move up. Now it's trying to flush back in uh, right here, right now. Um, just real quick. I am starting an Apple short, but it's just because we've represented this 50 period the whole damn time. Um, so we're gonna try that again. If we break above this 50 period, I kind of want to use this little wick top right there. So maybe 35 or 36 as an out, we'll build into this position. Um, we're only short right now, very, very small starter position here uh, to build with that. Um, we are also looking for AMD shorts now, I feel like. You know, you're under the 50 period, but I'm looking more watching out for this 81 where we have VWAP, where we have um, uh, the 200 period. And again, we'll be up uh, or no, sorry, we'll still be a little bit down actually on AMD. I mean, we took a shot down here. I actually remember, I, I mean, I told you I had 600 shares, but I didn't realize like, I wasn't trying for that many shares, maybe two or 300, um, but all my orders filled at once and it really started to go to the upside. Once we got back into here, I was like, oh my God, I felt like we only wanted like 100 shares, let's just say we wind up getting 600. I think it was more like two and in, into six. So when it started happening, I was like, okay, we gotta get out, man. This name is just falling down. I'd hate to have this happen because then we don't really have any targets to get out and blah, blah, blah. So we wind up holding a little piece up to VWAP, then a piece back into here and getting out at 181, but I'll short again here on AMD. So that's what we're gonna try to do right now. See about an, an order into this area. So I'm trying 180.30s. I, I, again, I'd like to see it go and work with it in this area against these levels. So let's give it a chance to breathe a little bit here with AMD. So that's that trade there. Bitcoin and iBit still dancing around as well. The best trade for me today is gonna be similar to what it was yesterday. And that was Tesla. And again, it was really, really quick to get in and out of these trades. So we had a huge move down. We came into some support that we liked. We talked about liking 174. We actually wrote down 174 right here on our sticky note today. And I talked about it and I thought I justified the move pretty good here with everybody. This was that jump spot yesterday, you know, right when the market started to go. So this was past Powell. So this is 230. Powell comes out, dances around, then jumps. So that's what we liked. 
So we took that exact same trade, look at this, right into this area. So that was about a buck 50. Then it came right back into the area again. And then you know what happens when that comes through. We get it locked and loaded. Um, and we put that in the clip and fire it off right there again, right back up to a dollar 50 upside there for um, Tesla. Now we left it alone. It, it had a huge move down. Maybe we should buy. We've talked about 172 before on this name. Could be a little level. I feel like I'm pretty happy with what we're in now. I bit probably breaks lower very soon. We're going to try a little bit more down here to average it into 35,000. Sorry. And I really hope that wasn't a Freudian slip there when I just said Bitcoin 35,000. <laughs> uh, but 65,000 coming through. Right, that's amazing. Eh? 65,000 just to say that. Yeah. Like, Wait, it, we were just at like 30 to 40. Just, I know. Well, I remember it? the like podcast. Days ago. Yeah, two, three weeks like, ago, 50. Yeah. I was like, if we break 50, we could go long. That bid came in real hot. Let's just say that. And that's, that's just kind of how crypto, crypto cycles have, yeah, uh, good, have good been, call. right? Like the, a, lot, a lot of, the, a lot of the, the strength either way comes in real hot, real fast in the span of just a few weeks, right? Um, and that's kind of what we've, uh, what we've seen and observed on oh, the Bitcoin push after. into the 70s. We were holding that thir those 30s for a little bit there. And then, uh, yeah, to the, to the downside, or sorry, to the upside before we kind of revisit the downside as well. But uh, yeah, right, kind of coming into that, this, uh, this 45 area here. So I got that on watch. Um, I did say I was going to wait for a bounce, but uh, I didn't really wait for a bounce into the 45. But we are bouncing a little bit here, so let's see. But the future is uh, quite heavy there, uh, distinctly heavy there, uh, breaking through that 18.6 and pushing into the 18, uh, 18 halves as well. NVIDIA pushing those lows. Let's take a quick look at the map here. Uh, let's see, so Alphabet pulling back in. Apple's con Apple continues to make new lows, so it's a good thing we got out of that one. We tried that long, it did not really work. So uh, we're, we're, we'll just stay a little bit patient there. Again, I, I think uh, the short idea was definitely the right one, and it happened much, much earlier here. So me trying to catch a bounce on uh, something that's been trending uh, pretty much all day that has a cattle has, has a negative catalyst I shouldn't necessarily be uh, forcing that too much you got to stay as nimble as possible if I am trying to counter it but uh, that 171 not really holding right now 45 46 uh, kind of holding as of right now here on reddit I think there was like a, a two to three thousand lots on that 45 looked a little juicy there so I did I did get in a little early in anticipation but uh, again it doesn't work it's fine. Next trade. What is the next trade? I have no idea well, right I now. I didn't but pay for bounce. Reddit shorts, did you? you yeah, yeah. I, just, I, I paid for them a little bit later, but uh, I, d I do have them uh, what, what on Reddit. What is the Reddit. cost of those? Do you remember? I do oh, not yeah. remember. I'm going to look I think it up. I think, I think it, was, uh, just, uh, it was under a couple of bucks, I think. Okay. Yeah. Um, Apple holding that 171. Oh, boy. Okay. All right. Well, then uh, maybe I do need to reassess this. Let's see. But uh, what are like you said, in? I'm I'm in nothing right now. So I just got I got stopped out of Apple. I got stopped out of uh, uh, Reddit as well. Reddit's kind of popping back up. I was looking to take Reddit through that 45, but uh, if it's not going to happen right now, it's uh, I might just wait for a little bit of a pop to see if that can bring us into that 45 level on Reddit. Oh, it's cheap. if not, yeah. How how much are they? 1.6 cents. Yeah, a share. It's, yeah, it's not bad. So Reddit spread is like three, four, five cents. So it's free. It's basically free. Uh, right there to get it. What was that? Spread it. Spread it. Yeah, credit. There, stay on your show, okay? <laughs> uh, but uh, there it is. Um, nice move down. That's funny, though. Spread it, Reddit. <laughs> Damn it. She's good. Okay. Um, just real quick. So we got reloaded up there. We got the 50 period on Apple there. Uh, now we're short right here. We just got something out at O's. Uh, we're short at 10s. We always take a dime on that one uh, right there. But we just paid for shorts. Oh, did I hit accept? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, so now we can go over to Reddit. I'm going to try to let this settle down. I mean, here we go, man. Apple with a nice move to the downside right now. We're bidding 90s here. We need to, I mean, nice move. I mean, it would just, this is how violent it is. Uh, we just went from 15s down to 95s in just a matter of seconds right there. Uh, we'll wait for AMD to come back up, but I'm going to buy a little bit. Okay, there it is. Uh, we actually wind up crossing and closing the spread there at 94. Get some outs there, and we'll just go like this again. It's not a lot of money, but right now, I told you, we're up on the day, and we're trying to add to some of our uh, balance right now. So my next bid on Apple is down there at 90s, then the 80s, and now over to the desk with Brendan. Got opinions on central bankers, geopolitics, and economic data? Apply your macro views with a Forex account at IG. 
Currencies like Euro and USD can require as little as 2% margin rates and offer $0 commission trading using a Forex account at IG. For a limited time, traders can open, fund, and trade with IG for up to 10000 in funding bonuses. Terms and conditions apply. All righty then, and we do should uh, we should be having Frank Caberna coming out soon, so uh, we'll hear all about what was going on yesterday, the opinion of the Fed, and where potentially rates are going, and his opinion on all of that. And you're going to want to stay tuned in just a couple minutes for Frank from IG. So hit that QR code uh, and go support them over there. Thanks, Brendo, uh, for that. Okay, um, so Apple did flush there a little bit. We did get our 90 fills, so that's good. So you know we're happy with that. Obviously, we talked about where we're going to be getting out. If there's a problem, is going to be right in around here 20. 171.20, 171.30. You guys pick your poison on that one. Uh, iBit doing nothing right now. And then RDDT, the one that everybody wants to go with. Thanks, guys. I thought that was a pretty cool. Uh, we have a pretty cool thumbnail uh, for tonight's stream or this stream okay, right now. Okay, for Reddit. It's a cool little Reddit guy there. Um, all right. So I think you guys are right, maybe. Um, breaking down through this might be the best trade right now. I, this is a based out, oh shoot. I feel completely fine, but like now I, again, I feel like a sneeze is coming on. I don't, I'm gonna have to maybe go <laughs> blow my nose or something, but I feel fine, I didn't even sneeze yet. Um, all right, so, all right, now we're starting to go back up to the upside. Yeah. So the reason why I say negative or positive, remember when I was like, oh, you're gonna be sitting around the dinner table tonight and saying that Reddit was up 67%, well, it just lost 30% there um, on the way back down. So watch out right now, maybe that's a bottom, maybe it isn't, but you know what? I'm gonna try to break through 45. So we're going to put an order in now. We'll try the break of 45. We tried the break of 50 right here. I told this to Obi. He was sitting here. I only crossed up 20 cents, or maybe it was 30 cents. Either way, we missed it. I don't, I'm not even sure we were close. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I'm going to use a market order to go short 45. I probably will not. I'm going to use that same thing. We'll cross 20, 30 cents to the downside for Reddit. So I'm going to try that. And, um, you know, this last break, so this bottom break here of 40... Let's call it 47.50. That immediately went down a dollar and change. Then the next candle gave it two bucks. So I feel like at least uh, probably about a dollar, probably about a dollar worth of risk on a break. Makes sense, right? Break this. If we break that, then we get out again. So you're really consolidating right now. I'm going to trade a breakdown of Reddit through 45. I don't want to just sit here and say let's let's short the tops because then boom goes a dynamite and then you're losing a dollar and you don't even have a choice. So I think we'll play that bottom break with an out of a dollar the other way. So I, I feel more confident playing with the trend in right now, although it's consolidating, I'd prefer the short Apple going back into that uh, 171 area again. So that's gonna be good. Hopefully we can get a move down on that one. Anything else uh, Nothing you're much. thinking about? I, I mean, I'm, I'm watching that Reddit real close there. So, What was uh, your idea on it? So I, 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 just, I just tried a couple of shorts uh, just in uh, trying to push into that uh, 45. And yeah, we do kind of bounce uh, a little bit of a double bounce there off that 45. There was some size sitting there. So I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to get out of this and kind of reassess. I did say I was going to wait for pops. And that, this was these entries were not waiting for pop. So now I'm, I am probably going to wait for a little bit of a pop here. Uh, looking for a, a, bit of a bit of a bid here on the market there. It doesn't seem like it's really doing too much as of right now. And the question I ask is how much is left for this 15 minute candle to print? About a minute and a half for this 15 minute, for these 15 minute candles to kind of print there. So I'll be patiently waiting to see if, if uh, or where the market may catch a little bit of a bid here to give us some direction. But uh, yeah, nothing too crazy there. People talking about coin. Have you seen coin today? Coin has been blasting. Yeah, why the is that? Or oh, not anymore. Not anymore, Sean. So okay, it kind yeah, of recovered the oh, whole move. You saw there. Bitcoin just broke sixty-five. Um, yeah, so a little bit of a bit of a pullback uh, on coin uh, Ooh, coming in yeah. on that as well. Pulling back into yesterday's close, very, very strong. You could pretty much buy the open, sell the close yesterday, and uh, today. Maybe not so much. You, uh, you had a strong move right off the open. Now we're kind of reclaiming the whole thing as of right now. So uh, let's see what Coin, Coinbase kind of does. What else are you guys trading? Um, Sean is uh, talking about, is Apple and Reddit both puts? I have no idea. Uh, Sean McKenzie, uh, is it? Me yeah, McKenny in, uh, in the chat there. That's what they asked. Do you want to know? Um, Apple, Re Apple and Reddit both puts is the question. Oh, so we, we um, so first of all, we trade, yeah, we just trade against, um, 
We just trade equity. So whether or not you have calls or options or uh, puts, any, any kind of which way. Um, I think you could probably trade similar, some of the calls or whatever that I'm trading or any of us are trading. Uh, you can use that for options. I mean, as long as most of the stocks I trade anyways will be option eligible. So, um, All right. Did, are we ready? Oh, okay, perfect. All right. The moment that we've been waiting for, let's go hear what Frank has to say. It's IG, it's Frank Cabern, and it's Brendan. Yeah, what a difference a couple of days make um, here as far as the market, as far as uh, interest rates are concerned. We get um, quite the dovish Fed Chair Powell yesterday, Frank. It was an uh, interesting press conference in a number of uh, stances from, from my point of view anyway. I was not expecting him to be so dovish when referring specifically to these inflation prints that we've had over the past week or so coming in higher than expected, kind of shrugging it off, saying, you know, it was never going to be a straight line. It was seasonality when it comes to January. It was, you know, whatever you want to call it for, for the rest of it. But give me, give me your thoughts here coming off of um, what happened yesterday and then going into, as we were talking about a little bit earlier on the show, um, he's going to be speaking again tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah, I couldn't agree with you more uh, in terms of the dovish talk ca catching me a little bit off guard. Um, and uh, this is one of those, uh, Brendan, that, you have to believe that Fed Chair Powell and the rest of the uh, Fed members, the central bankers here in the U.S., have a lot more information and insight than you and I have, which isn't to say that information and insight might not change on a dime at some point in the next couple of months. Um, but, yeah, they seem very, very comfortable with those recent inflation prints not going necessarily in the direction that everybody wanted them. Uh, which is to say not going towards 2% like the central bank necessarily wants. Uh, and almost in the face of that, yeah, came out and said, uh, we're still likely to cut rates here this year, almost kind of uh, uh, guaranteeing it. And yeah, the dot plot um, also uh, being pretty firm there, uh, almost exactly where it was in December, even though it's been a pretty hot uh, January and February here in 2024 in terms of uh, U.S. data. And so, again, yeah, it, it, it seems like, it, and we got the same thing. Um, uh, we could talk about the Bank of England uh, as well, because the pound is getting pretty much an, annihilated here today. Um, it, it's one of those, Brendan, where the major central bankers all seem to be on the same page that uh, we're all heading lower. Um, and, and I think that there is uh, a little bit of a fear that um, if we wait to cut rates until we get exactly 2% inflation, um, then by the time uh, this lower interest rate feeds on through uh, the US economy or the uh, English economy or, or the Eurozone or, or whoever, by the time it feeds through, uh, Brendan, it might be too late. And uh, those backward looking metrics like inflation and employment and everything else uh, might start ticking in the negative direction uh, by the time they finally cut if they wait too long. And so, yeah, I, I mean, uh, again, this data can all turn. Uh, Fed Chair Powell, while he might have the most information here in the U.S. in terms of inflation and employment, he doesn't know necessarily what happens in April and May and June leading up to potentially this first cut. Um, but he seems real confident uh, that it is coming. Yeah, and in a hurry, uh, it would appear. And as you mentioned, you know, Bank of England and Bank of Canada seem to be now on that same, you know, similar path. Anyway, all right, we we talked a little bit on this uh, back on Tuesday with the dot plot and some of these economic projections. Walk us through, you know, what this means, this this graphic that you have here in relation to what we got back in December. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, this here letting you know that one, I, I mean, a handful of things. Um, one, interest rates are heading in the lower direction over the course of the next several years. Each of those dots is a, essentially a vote from a Fed uh, member. Um, and so you see there in the longer run, the expectation is uh, really focused around two and a half percent. That's where they want uh, interest rates in that longer run. And, and that pairs well with an inflation rate that's around you know one to two percent, which is where they want it. So interest rates higher than inflation and inflation still positive, showing that an economy 
uh, in the U.S. is growing, but not too fast uh, to, to really damper uh, consumers that have to pay such high prices. Um, but yeah, in the shorter term, uh, you have the focus here for 2024, Brendan, right around four and a half percent, which is about 75 basis points lower than where U.S. rates are currently. Um, and though you do have some more hawkish Fed members that in 2024 Uh, have rates uh, projected exactly where they currently are. And even uh, you have one uh, uh, curmudgeon who uh, is there saying that interest rates are going to have to stay around 5% or higher for the next two years. Um, But the the focus is really lower in this year and uh, then even lower in the uh, coming years. And now where the potential choppiness comes, I mean, the, the biggest... Uh, potential volatility inducing event for 2024, Brendan, is if inflation stays high or, God forbid, bounces back in the US or Canada or UK. They've all been relatively highly correlated over the course of the last two or three years. If inflation bounces back and they price out these cuts for 2024 and those projections in the outer years lift, um, that will likely have significant effects on uh, the stock market and that gold market that's blowing through 2200 uh, last night and uh, this morning, giving back some gains. Uh, But it'll have significant effects for those markets. That seems to be the least probable uh, uh, potential outcome here. What could still shake up these markets, and you and I have talked on it, and, and we've you know, become uh, a, a very in tune with the Fed Watch tool from the CME Group, uh, who supplies the Fed funds futures that help us project where and and when uh, the Fed is moving interest rates. Uh, if this shifts out in time, if if Fed Chair Powell has to come out at the May meeting and say yes, rates are likely to move lower here in 2024, but we're not ready yet, that could still cause a lot of turbulence for uh, the stock market and the gold market. Because, yeah, we looked at these odds on Tuesday, Brendan. They were at around 60%, now jumping up to 73% chance of a cut in June. Um, And if this continues to inflate on the cut side, and we do get that first cut in June, I think you will see a sigh of relief uh, from the stock market and all the ancillary asset classes that move based off of interest rates or with some correlation to interest rates, uh, because it'll be like, okay, we we finally got the first cut. And they now, if they cut in June, they can cut effectively three times in 2024 without uh, it being crazy or or feeling rushed uh, to get it done. If they push that out, then the clock starts ticking on, are are you going to get these three cuts in by the end of the year? Or is it only going to be one or two? Or is it going to be none? I mean, I remember when I first started trading was the environment where uh, interest rates were down at 0%. And we were waiting, waiting, waiting month after month for the Fed to hike. And then they finally did hike up to, I think it was one and a half or 2%, very, very gradually though. Uh, and, And that's just to say that the Fed won't get rushed into something Uh, in most cases, be it hiking interest rates or moving them lower, because they know that once they do it, that has a lot of downstream effects for, you know, potentially uh, months down the line. And it's just so hard to balance this backward looking inflation and employment and all this stuff and try to say, okay, we think inflation will be good in, uh, you know, July and, and August and everything else. Uh, and so we're going to cut here in June um, uh, without it being either too early or too late. So uh, eyes on June for that first uh, cut. And there will be implications likely to the up or downside based on if uh, they get it done. And he did allude to that in some sense, I think, a little bit yesterday, pointing to that the first one is going to be the most impactful um, yeah. Across the board, which essentially what you're what you're pointing to, um, we talked a little bit about the um, the move in the dollar late in the day yesterday. But highlight some of the other currencies here that have just been wild in the past 24 hours. Crazy, crazy price action in forex, and and I I love the central bank season because you get so many moves like this one, and and the pound 
dollar move is an even crazier example of this, which is, uh, like I said earlier, and of, of course, there can be instances where central banks uh, do different stuff, where they're not all on the same page. But I feel like this happens every time uh, we hit central central bank season. And by that, I mean the ECB, the Bank of Japan, uh, the Bank of Canada, uh, the Fed, and the Bank of England, uh, the, the major central banks all tend to meet in the same week or so span. Um, and so what we saw in the last 24 hours is Fed Chair Powell comes out, says we're not changing rates, and then says, you know, we're likely to cut rates at some point here this year. And they kill the US dollar. Uh, Euro jumps up well beyond 109. Uh, pound gets up close to 128. Uh, even the yen, the poor weak yen uh, that's gotten beaten up so much recently, uh, has a big bounce to it. Australian dollar has a nice bounce here. Canadian dollar has a nice bounce. Everybody beaten up on the US dollar. And then the Bank of England comes out. And keep in mind, the UK has been, uh, I would almost say, you know, the US, UK, and Canada have been some of the strongest economies in the last couple of years in terms of high interest rates and uh, GDP output and everything else um, when, you all put, when you put that all together. Uh, and the Bank of England comes out uh, early this morning and they say essentially the same thing, uh, maybe come out a little bit more dovish and that US dollar rallies and, and uh, you see a complete reversal in all those pairs, uh, which is just craziness. Um, and, and so I like that back and forth, especially when you look at a stock in gold market um, that has been uh, essentially one way on this news, uh, which is up and to the right. S&P uh, obviously seeing, um, th they kind of muddled through it yesterday for a little bit, searching for a direction. And then obviously uh, here today, um, continuing in that, uh, that upside direction, although it looks like they're giving back some ground the last uh, hour or so. Obviously, you guys are on that uh, closer than I am. Uh, but this gold market also uh, moving higher on this uh, con confirmation of interest rates uh, moving lower in the future. Um, and man, gold really strong open to the futures last night. Unbelievable. I don't know if anybody watched that one, uh, but blowing out 2200 right on the open and giving back some ground here today. Now trading closer to, uh, I got uh, like 2185, but a really strong gold market, all time highs in terms of the gold futures um, that I have data for since uh, at least the 90s. Um, and so, yeah, you're seeing a little bit of that one way action, although, like I said, in the last couple hours, you're seeing a little bit of two way action for stocks and gold and, and some of those uh, other markets. But yeah, th those Forex markets seen a ton of back and forth as uh, that game of relativity uh, makes it so much more nuanced and uh, difficult for people to pick one direction or the other. Yeah, it's amazing how, um, you know, an event like this can change sentiment and change the whole mentality and the idea going forward. I mean, we were just talking about uh, banks all of a sudden. I mean, they've been strong, but banks notably strong today, equities, anyways, across the board. So um, just real quick to wrap up here, we got, I think it's only just an opening remarks type of situation uh, tomorrow morning from Fed Chair Powell again. I, I mean, at this point, you know, there's probably not much else that can be said um, after what happened yesterday. Um, it's going to be a while until we get anything significant. There are a few other Fed speakers to come through, but I mean, tomorrow should be, you know, just maybe even a little bit of follow through. Yeah, I couldn't imagine anything shocking. Um, maybe we get a little bit of this. Uh, me and some of the uh, guys over here on uh, our side talk about uh, kind of the, the law of di diminishing volatility with some of these things. If he does come out and he reiterates some kind of dovish comment, maybe you see the same trends that you saw on Thursday but maybe just not as big of a move. You know, if you saw market X move 1% higher or lower off of uh, Powell's dovish statements on Wednesday, if he comes out as a dove again tomorrow with uh, any remarks as to, oh yeah, interest rates, we're, we're moving them lower. Um, maybe it's, you know, half a percent or, or something that's uh, uh, around half the volatility of that. Cause yeah, I, I mean, the, the other, the flip side of that coin is he comes out and says something about how inflation is stronger than they expected it to be. And these markets really reverse course from Wednesday. I don't see that happening. Probably a reiteration. Maybe we get some, I hope we get some wiggle on it. 
uh, because some of this volatility has been uh, uh, great this week uh, for us uh, active traders. Yeah, a lot of people are um, pretty excited about Reddit today as well, coming to market. So that's might be the bit of the noise you're, you're hearing in the background right now. Great stuff as always. Uh, Frank Aberna, good to see you. Have a great evening. Thanks, Brennan. Yeah, Frank, uh, echoing some of the thoughts that we had Raheem Alani on earlier, talking about some of the metals and the precious metals and things like that. And we talked about gold skyrocketing. You asked me about silver earlier. Uh, of course, I knew nothing about it. Uh, FCX was a name today that, you know, we again, if you're looking at junior miners, going to be a different story. But, um, you know, Freeport just continues to rocket higher here. Um, look at the move that we've had on copper. And, I mean, I... We don't have copper futures on the platform. I'd have to look it up on TradingView or something or um, uh, trade ideas. But there's a nice move up here, 38 all the way up to 46 uh, and still going. So, yeah, a lot of those names, pretty interesting right there. And, yeah, I was really actually surprised at some of the dovish talk there that we had from Powell. He could have gone the other way for right. sure, but he didn't. So we're pretty happy with that one. But thanks, Frank. I don't know if we got the Frank bump there or not, but we shorted Apple and then brought it all the way back down. So there it is again. I mean, we'll be positive on Apple today. We're doing quite well, man. We're positive on Tesla. SoFi is actually a completely flat trade. Uh, Micron is, is, an, is an L for us. We did take that there, but slightly down on that. Uh, Apple, obviously, we're trading that in iBit. All right, well, while that was going on, we were able to buy a little bit there on iBit. We didn't get our very bottom take there. We actually canceled the 37 just because I was like, if it's going to run it over, it's going to run it over. We should have took it. Comes back up into the 50 period and get a little bit out, but we're going to be red on iBit as well. So a couple red names there, a couple up names. We'll be up on the day, though, net-net because of some of the, you know, the different share sizes and whatnot that we took. But you know what's really winning today? What I mean, congratulations. Anybody that kind of played... In my opinion, first of all, Apple's starting to go down right now. Apple just broke through, so we're 30 cents in the money there. Um, DraftKings. So DraftKings is a funny name here because March Madness, this is the last four or five days. So this week, starting today, is March Madness. Monday or Sunday night, they released the bracket. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we just continue to go to the upside. I would say you fade this move, but... When they release all the, amount, the amounts of gambling and all those kind of numbers that are going to come through off of uh, just this last week, well, just starting today, but this week, heading into next week, and then once we get uh, in the championship game, then maybe that's when you sell it. I'm not sure baseball is going to be a huge uh, tailwind for them, although there's a lot of gambling in baseball. But that's a nice move up there for DraftKings. And again, congratulations to anybody that really did believe in this name. I am out of this name in and around here. So we got out on this top and we came right back. We fell back in, then we re retested it. I got out in and around 30, probably, I think it was 37, 38. Anyways, we did talk about it and I feel bad uh, for myself because it's a nice move right back there to the upside. And I say congratulations to everybody there on DraftKings. So I just met an individual that's part of our campus program. So um, he's all the way here from Quebec, or from Quebec, yeah, I actually didn't, didn't catch the city uh, there, but I don't even a big shout out to everybody that's part of that campus program that's there in the chat, and also right here, go over to Real Trading, be a part of this community. We talk about how much fun we have here all the time. We had a lot of fun today. You heard the screaming about Reddit. Yep. You get some good wow. trade ideas coming through with a lot of our uh, experienced traders in behind, and then even if they're not too experienced, you know, it's sharing ideas yeah. um, and trying to figure it all out. And it's always easier, you know, it's like if you're, taking, if you're on that roller coaster for the first time. It's nice to sit beside someone that's already been on it, I'm talking about like real roller coasters here. Um, and then it's also important to sit beside somebody that's maybe also never been on it as well. So you can share similar experiences like, oh my God, are we going to fly out of this roller coaster or not? <laughs> um, are the seatbelts safe? Yeah. And hey, they might even tell you they are and potentially yeah. they're not. Uh, but... It's always nice to have that sort of back and forth. So I think that it's something that we really accomplish here on our floor yeah. by having various, um, you know, individuals that's like a, yourself. That's a great friend. analogy. Yeah. It's like remember, okay. remember that time I was getting uh, you can getting stay. some uh, getting some palpitations and you're that's the, the roller coaster. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean's definitely been on many roller coasters no, before, like, and Sean was like, relax. You're so, like, you know, you got the whole, you got the you got the harness on. Don't worry about it. You'll be fine. I was like, okay, all right, yeah, all right. Yeah. I trust you. So, I like the know. harness thing there. Yeah, too, so well. the, I, that's why I was like that roller coaster analogy definitely works well. Obi might sure. fly out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. Um, if you lived in Canada, T Money would be there. Yeah, we apologize. Unfortunately, Real Trade. I don't apologize. It is what it is. Oh, I do actually. My it is what it is. I wish fly everybody could be. Uh, are you? Are you? What was that tomorrow? No, I said I'm. I'm. I'm going away for the weekend. Oh, you are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Is that where you're going to Chicago? You mentioned that before. Uh, New York. New York. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be going to New York for the weekend. Yes. Sick. But then you have to be back because you have to fill in. Yeah. Next, I'll be back on okay, Sunday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry Sunday. about that. Yep. So yeah, no, that, that roller coaster analogy definitely works quite well. Um, let's see. I said sorry about that because I wish you could have a longer vacation. Not yeah. I mean, it's not. It's not really. Uh, I wouldn't really call it a vacation. Let's say it's just a. A little bit of a uh, uh, trading education, maybe. I don't know. We'll oh, see. Good. We'll okay, go check okay, out. Okay, okay. I gotta go see the bull, right? I gotta go see the bull. Oh yeah, that's go. right. Uh, <laughs> Big Patty Ice told you to do something to that bull. I remember that. I don't touch the bull. Oh yeah, I actually said this in the in the. Um, I, I looked over to Sharif and I was like, okay. So I see what Raheem's doing. You know, Raheem phones in from Cancun. You know why he does that? Smart guy. First of all, he loves Trader right. TV Live. Shout out to my guy, uh, Raheem Milani, OCI. Uh, but again, now it's a tax write-off. You conduct business there. Yeah. You know, you can start to write off certain expenses. You know, potentially, I'm not, all right. All right. Not taxable advice nice. here. I'm just <laughs> telling you that those are different expenses that you can do, especially as an independent contractor or things right. like that. Right. I don't know what, what his taxable situation is, but uh, those are some interesting ideas. Thanks for Amin uh, for that idea in my head, because I was mentioning it to Sharif earlier. And I said, man, if Neil was smart, he'd be phoning in from Florida right now. Uh, we'll see if we can we get could, him. We could, we could call him up. Be like, hey, we'll see if we get him on yeah. the hook. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remind him of see that. See what's up. I'm going to remind him of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. Tell him, yo. <laughs> Let's get some business done. Let's handle that business uh, right there. Okay, uh, we just got some more out of Apple. Apple at the day's low. I mean, let's just spin the money for this trade, honestly. Um, it, is, it is what it is there. And, oh, yeah, uh, there was somebody in the chat that that was like, um, that when I was long here, everybody in the office was screaming. I think they were screaming because it was coming down. Uh, and then there, there it comes down into the downside. And then we bought 48.50, able to get that out and then dropped it out right there. So pretty much a flat trade. Three bucks there, um, in there, out, averaged up in. I think that was a positive trade and then lost right there. So we went long at 48. That out right there is 47. I told you guys this already. 47, I'll have to find the exact order, 47.70, something like that. So I think if you were trading with me, the most you probably would have lost there was about a buck, a buck 50. And, and, and honestly, if you want to hold for more, I don't, I, I don't hate on that idea. Like, I think we should be holding for more. I think there's a lot of potential here uh, with a lot of these names today. So, um, yeah, holding on to more for a win there is not a horrible idea as we battle right now with Apple and try to figure out what we want to do. Yeah, Teddy, uh, uh, Teddy the trader in, uh, in the chat saying, up, Teddy? Uh, NYC, eat pizza at artichoke. Order the artichoke, trust me. All right, yeah, no, I was asking a couple of friends there. Oh, cool. uh, I was like, all right, what's the best pizza in, uh, in New York? Because yeah. I definitely want to try. And uh, yeah, they were like, that, that's a hotly debated topic was, uh, was the answer that I got. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm, I, I bet it is, but uh, we'll, we'll, figure, we'll figure something out. So artichoke is definitely one of them. Yeah, was, throw, throw it in the chat. You guys got yeah, some, the, uh, got some pizza places uh, that, would, uh, that, would, you know, that would do justice to the, uh, to, to the infamous uh, New York pizza. I will definitely try to go and check it out uh, tomorrow, yeah. Yo, take a but, picture uh, for sure, okay? Yeah, yeah, no, I gotta, yeah, I gotta go, uh, I gotta go touch do. the bull. You're, if you're <laughs> talk- beside, oh, there's a real old picture. Let me ask my wife if she can find it. Uh, there's a real, real old picture of me probably, well, it's actually I proposed in Central Park. So, um, yeah, I can't remember how, how many years, I mean, hold on a second. I can exactly remember how many years I've been married. <laughs> 12, 13, 12 or 13, something like that. Um, and so there's a picture. Is she watching right now? Yeah, probably. I'll probably. If you see in a minute, I'll get a message here. I'm going to be in big, 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 big trouble. Uh, but yeah, I'll see if I can find that picture. I was beside the bull. I wasn't doing nice. anything oh. potentially too crazy there uh, with said bull. But um, yeah, so we'll, we'll find that you picture. You're going to grab it by the horns or what? Yeah, we're grabbing it by, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I think you should do for sure. I'll try to see if I can find that picture and show it on the show in just a couple minutes. All right. Um, so we, we were, we're now, I mean, we got a lot out there on Apple as it fell back in. We, we kept on getting more and more out. I'll try it one more time up here. I mean, the market's still underneath. I still feel fine with everything. Um, you know, so this is Apple and we'll trade it accordingly. So right now that's what we're looking for here with AAPL, a little bit of a dip down. And if we break up here through 171.30, then we will get out of Apple. 
Yeah, so I, I'm, I, I did also get a little short on, on the Apple. I was interested in that 171, but it does seem like it is coming right back dollars. up there. So uh, market kind of uh, attempting to do a little bit of a balance, 18,560. Uh, We've got a couple of wiki, uh, wiki action, triple wick in that area right now. So uh, maybe, I have no idea, but let's see what we got in store off of that. We only got about, it is power hour. We got 50 minutes left. So I'm just being a little, uh, a little bit patient there. I did say the bell has not rung. I did kind of go a little bit, uh, uh, um, let's see, what, what, do, what do I want to call it? Let, let me, let me, I was going to say uh, full on monkey tilt, but uh, maybe, not, maybe not that much. I did try one too many times, maybe three too many times there uh, into that 45. I, was, I, I saw the size at 45. I'm like, all right, well, but the thing is like, I'm so anchored to that short bias that I don't realize, take a step back and realize that like, oh, hey, there was size at 45 and now we're holding above it. And then we kind of double bottom, not really double bottom, double bounced like into that area, picked up, broke this trend, and now we're slowly kind of creeping back up into that 50. So I don't, I don't have to be trying it that many times here. Uh, what is it, one, two, three, four. Four times, that's three too many, maybe two too many there. A couple times is fine. That second bounce definitely kind of giving it away that, that 45 maybe doesn't want to break right away right now. Here comes Apple, that 171 holding quite uh, quite well there. We're just chopping and churning in and around uh, that 171, and uh, I think I'm about to get uh, a little bit uh, a little bit clocked out there. So we'll let that happen. Next trade, I am watching. Uh, I guess obviously Reddit and Apple, but uh, Amazon, that 180 short uh, that someone was talking about in the chat, working out quite well for Amazon there. So Amazon uh, has been making lower lows. Uh, sorry, lower, lower lows, lower highs as well. Take a look at that strong wick off the open and then kind of uh, can't really get past the VWAP pulling back in, but still well above yesterday's close and yesterday's action as well. Very strong into the close. We, we kind of saw that. I think I uh, tried, a, tried a little uh, uh, cheeky scalp into the, into the imbal on Amazon yesterday. Some interesting stuff. Again, uh, nothing really crazy there. Um, as of yesterday, but today that fade off of 180, oh boy, is that working really well? But uh, the fade on Apple, it was the one for sure. I'm kind of getting a, 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 a little bit. Uh, I, I know for a fact that when I go and review this trade, Sean, I'm just going to be like, all right, well, why am I punching 171s after we've come down from 178s? I'm looking for that continuation. But uh, yeah, I think uh, one try is uh, is uh, is good enough there. If it if it works, it works. If it doesn't, that's perfectly fine. I'm not going to make the same mistake I did right here on Reddit, trying to force that <laughs> force the push through that 45 with uh, with my breadcrumbs here. So uh, we are bidding right back up off that 45, quite significant. I think it was like two two to three thousand uh, lots there um, oh, on that 45, if I remember correctly. And we've been bidding up since then, breaking that uh, breaking that uh, intermittent trend that we've had off of these strong sellers that did show up. Uh, in the mid 50s there on uh, on reddit but uh, yeah let me know what uh, what you guys are trading in the chat uh, talk tesla saying uh, uh, sniz man all right let's we'll talk some tesla right now let's see what tesla's up to yeah. tesla to the downside for the most part so looking similar to to a few of the names on the day if you're looking at google and apple here uh, very very uh, distinctly similar same with the nq as well right nq kind of uh uh, pushing pushing uh, relatively lows. It is below the open there on the NQ. Just got to watch this Apple uh, just to see. It is quite close to the stop, so uh, yeah, I probably going to get clocked out uh, pretty soon there. But yeah, Tesla, again, This th we talk about this. Uh, this it's interesting. It's just an observation, right? Like, I, I know nothing. Just an observation that I've been making is that when, when and if VWAP is holding, it holds. It might hold a couple times, it might hold multiple times, but unless and until it doesn't, uh, that might be a, a, a look to have. But uh, yeah, right off the open, you can see, let's go down to a, uh, to a smaller time frame here on Tesla, because it does look uh, like a distinct downtrend, even using some of that pre-market action, we've only made lower highs. Look, any attempt at a fresh high has been lower, lower, lower. And then once you get uh, through VWAP and then retest, that VWAP is, stays a little bit heavy there, uh, a little bit of a confluence. Uh, again, if you're not really looking at VWAP, um, you can just, uh, I guess, look left on the chart and just be like, all right, well, support and resistance. We kind of uh, pushed up into this, uh, into this level, just uh, uh, which seems to be kind of interesting here. Here it tests from the bottom, here it tests from the top. So that, that price right there, 176 is uh, and change. 
nice little, when we get back through it, sellers really uh, really pour in to the ticker VWAP. Where was that at? Uh, 176.70, so like pretty r roughly in and around that same area. So maybe you see the VWAP and then you get that confluence and then uh, maybe this is your confirmation there uh, for, for, uh, for a strong sell. But uh, Tesla, very, very strong to the downside here. I think uh, it was just a, just a few days ago. Yeah, we were trading in the 160s. 160s uh, held quite well there. And then we bounced right back up into this 170s, 175-ish area on Tesla. But uh, interesting move. Again, we're, we're coming in off of, a, off of a bigger picture, kind of a, a flush, right? It feels like it was just yesterday that this thing was trading at two, uh, 260s to uh, 270s right here. Take a look at this. Wow, this is the weekly chart. On uh, on Tesla, so a little bit of a of a strong downturn go. there. We kind of talked about Let's this, go. Uh, I guess, earlier last year or mid mid uh, mid last year. We were looking at looking at some of this, and then we popped back up in nice little fade off of this. Uh, what is this 300 push? Can't really get past that 300 once again at the at the uh, middle of last year. When is this high right here? So July, yeah, it's about in and around the middle, and we kind of continue this overall trend. What is a monthly looking like this? I'm really curious. Arnobi, right, oh, you want to look at the earnings board or what? Yes, sir. All right, let's do this. Uh, let's see what's happening tonight. We do have Daniel Shea. Come oh, hold on a second before we throw that up. Let me just put this profile up. We have Daniel Shea uh, coming on tonight. We'll talk all about it. She wants to talk about NVIDIA, IBM, Microsoft, all the usual suspects. Get your questions ready for the market recap show, the best recap show out there. And it all starts with the earnings board. So let's just Go we'll find out uh, what's going on right now with the earnings board. We did get out of some more Apple there uh, on the downside push and averaged into it. You can see my trades at the bottom. All right, earnings board. We have Nike. We have Lulu. We've got FedEx. We talked about that. Uh, what else do we see on there that I'm missing? All right, not much after market other than those, basically those three names, FedEx, Lululemon, and Nike. Um, tomorrow morning, nothing again. Uh, so yeah, it looks like tonight you will be uh, with me and we'll find out where all those names are going to go. And those are like a nice bunch of names because we're going to get bellwethers, right? FedEx should be good for shipping and let, let us know maybe even about the retail landscape yeah. as, you know, are there being more packages shipped? You know, what, what's the situation there? What are they foreseeing? You're going to look for the guide for FedEx because if they see more shipments, then we can sort of push it down the line and maybe say, hey, if they're seeing more shipments, more demand, that potentially a stock like Amazon, oh, yeah. you know, could start to see a little bit of a downside or upside push on some sort of that kind of talk. This is what we're expecting. Oh, Accenture was this morning. Okay, so uh, there it is. It is Nike coming through with a 7.6 expected move. Look at this. They're all lined up here. Nike, 153 billion. Uh, next, FedEx, 65 billion. Then Lululemon, 60 billion. So those big three are right after there. And I'm going to say this is all, all of them pretty big for uh, retail. And then FedEx, of course, could be big for everything. I mean, I just think that's a good gauge on potentially what the environment looks like there uh, south of us, but in the United States. I was going to say south of the border. Uh, that would be our border. Uh, all right, so we just got right now um, some one set, well, 120s. And then 170, what are we short at 25s? So we're just short right now. We're going to play off of this break here. And I actually put it at 36. So if we break too high. We've been taking profits here. I mean, it's always nice that we don't have any ticks uh, lower or higher than where we're short. So that's what we're doing. We are working on that short right now. And I didn't even recognize this. We just got short AMD. And so we wanted to get short into this area. So it's a very small starter position here for AMD. The problem is we're starting to break a little bit here, but we're still well under. I mean, we can watch NVIDIA and all that. We've been shorting AMD today. Sorry, we've been going long AMD today. This is our first short on this name against 181, basically. So VWAP's up there at 181. Let's go short against that. We'll start a position here. We do have more offers higher than where we are right now, looking potentially even the 200 period as maybe an out. Let me cancel all these and regroup. But so far, that's what we're looking for. iBit is still dancing around and Apple dancing as well. Reddit is a story yeah, because 50. you're right back to VWAP. Yeah. So do you want to play the reverse on this? Let's go short. Yeah, that, that, I'm, I'm literally, I'm queued up for a short, but I'm like waiting. I'm, I'm patiently short. waiting for, for 50 to show me something special. I just punch short. Nice. Okay, so I'm short right there. I'm going to go short Reddit against this level 51. So here we go. 
There it is, man. It's instantly in the money we just got. You could take this out right now if you want this. Uh, Reddit right now at 4920s. Uh, it's a small trade. We're going to wait for this to go, of course. We're going to bid 48s on Reddit, see if we get something down there. Our out's going to be 51s, so we'd like to make a little bit of profit here just in case uh, it does go back up to the upside. We could turn red on Reddit. Red on Reddit. Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, it's like a double, I I double, triple entendre. Yeah, might have yeah. jinxed it. Okay, that could mean a few things. <laughs> All right, there goes, there goes red. Yeah, no, it's not even. I think even lower than that. Ramin said six out of ten, but I did not mean that. Uh, at all. So hopefully we do not go red on Reddit, but good little trade there. Averaged in on Apple. Again, we got a nice little high print there. Our average price is just 27 now on this. So let's just continue to just sort of do the same thing here on all of these names. Take profit where profit lies. Here comes another profit spot for us. If we can get back into the 20s uh, here on Apple, we'll take that out. And now we'll see if it can go back even lower. We're short now at 26.50. Just trying to stack it up. Reddit right here trying to break lower. We're short at 50s. It's a 50 cent winner. I mean, we're just hitting keys and putting up numbers so uh, again you guys do what you guys do best and I'll try to do what I'm doing best and that right now is trading so we're gonna keep doing that and uh, here we go reddit let's see if we get a downside push for this name yeah no I, I definitely like your entry there it's like uh, pretty much it works instantly and uh, I think uh, a little, little bit of a learning moment for me if I like it there it is if I like it just take it put some risk on Obi, this isn't the first time you sat here. Oh, yes. what, what I wanted to say, what I wanted to say to you actually. But I stay I, learning every time though. No, I but I, I can't pick up on all the value. No, no, you don't have to. But right what away, I what this, this is what I'm saying. I and, and I actually have something to talk about this with Sharif as well. Look, this is the thing. I feel like you guys should have more confidence than you have. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you've been looking at the charts a lot. Most of the calls that you make are really super solid calls. You know, so I just feel it's the same way what I talked to um, Adara about this and things like that is, is that the more we sit here, it's kind of like working out, okay? Yes. Like I can go home and say, I don't have time to work out, I don't have time to do this. And quite frankly, I probably don't. But I could find 30 minutes to do some, you know, push-ups, yeah. you know, run around, whatever, take the dog for a more aggressive walk, something like that. So I just feel that for you, most of the trades, like I'm sitting here looking at them, they're all pretty key, man. And you go over some charts and you know the right trades to do. So I, I want you to get over sort of that crutch of like, this is not, like I'm not ready for it yet because you're ready for it yet. You know, if I was like a major league team and you're in the minors, you'd be called up. Uh, so right there. So um, I just, well, yeah, I just think you should have a little bit more confidence. And again, it does take a while to build that. Yeah. And I think you're, you're ready for that. So just take the trades and let's see what happens uh, right now. All right. Uh, there we go. Look at that, man. Everybody's learning with you now. You know what I mean? So even in the chat, they well, we're learning that. together. I yeah, mean, exactly. And that's what it's all about. Let's <laughs> learn together. Um, and let's, even if you're a professional trader, like I learn so much every day as well. So that's the other, the other thing, right? We, we're all going to learn together. We're all going to get a heck of a lot better. That is for sure. All right, what's Trading up, is definitely a journey. Hey. Some interesting volume candles here on LNC. This is Lincoln National. This one already really strong here, heading uh, up about 7%. Uh, did get a price target increase to $33. Uh, nice volume here. So just keep an eye on LNC. Still strong heading into the close, guys. Okay. Yeah, so that was a really good trade there, and we're pretty happy with everything uh, that's been happening here today. We do have VinFast ad uh, that's up right now, so go check those guys out. Um, I'm not super happy now with Reddit, so we can check this out right now. We just got more shares short into this name. We are short at, yeah, that wasn't awkward at all. We got a nice little short there uh, at 49.70 right now, trying to go against 51. So if we break through 51, we'll watch out now, uh, but we're going to put a little bid, a little bit lower there, near 49, take the out this time if it does fall back in because we have a loaded up position and it's not a whole bunch of shares right now because you know what we're going to celebrate instead, Obi? Let's go, man. Let's face slap it out. There is Apple. Apple. So we talked about those levels oh and all we're going to do right now is say, oh boy, and say, oh boy, because it's falling down. Apple starting to pay us out a little bit right there. Look at all these shorts, the same level. Remember, our, remember what our out was? We said we're going to get out at, I, I, I can find it right now, 36. So we're short now at 28. So that is 8 cents worth of risk. Give me 2 cents worth of slippage. 
10 cents worth of risk to be printing what we're doing right now. Not that bad. Oh yeah, by the way, we sort of slept on AMD and guess what's happening with that one? We got another one on AMD right now. Shout out to DJ Khaled as well as we'll see about a short. See if we can get out here. We just bounced off the 50 period. We missed getting more short there. It didn't get up to that 200. Let's see if we can get a bid here. You know what? We just bid 90s there and missed it. So let's bid 98s. Take a piece out. If it comes down to 90, we'll take that. And all this is really is kind of like counting our blessings a little bit here. Um, as we, we've noticed, some of the trades that we've put on today um, in the morning weren't the greatest. We did get that nice uh, trade up on those execution worries. Uh, we we're able to make some money back there um, on AMD. So that was all good. Uh, and here goes Reddit, man. We are oh, yeah. starting to get a little bit higher now. 15. I'll probably stop the continuous reloads right now and see if we break through 51. And then, man, we will be, uh-oh, we will be red on Reddit if we break this, this high right here. So I'm going to get ready to punch this out. Remember we were debating going the other way on this name? Yeah, we were talking about like an end of day potential squeeze. That's why I right? literally paid for shorts just to lose now. So, hey, what's up with that? Um, I literally lost only on the shorts. Yep, <laughs> so, exactly. So, uh, yeah, yeah. A little bit of FOMO because, like, think about it. Like, I, okay, so bad preparation on, on, on my part. I borrowed the, share, the, the shares uh, a little bit after the IPO opened. I kind of had a had a had a talk with the with the risk manager there. Like, yeah, I got to be better prepared. Um, get them in before before the IPO kind of comes out there. But yeah, that that fifty six fifty seven uh, was quite distinct, and I, and I knew I didn't have shares. I knew I wouldn't be able to get them right away, so I kind of just got up and walked away, and then came back, and I was like, damn. 55s, 56 is a great place to sell as it comes all the way down to 45s. And I'm like, all right, well, now I'm chasing uh, maybe a little bit of FOMO tilt with, uh, with this. My, whenever my trading kind of looks like this, I know I'm, I, might be getting a little, I might be getting a little bit of FOMO, a little bit emotional about it, but uh, I'm learning how to better catch myself with that. And uh, the, first, uh, the first step is, uh, is acknowledging it and recognizing it, right? So uh, definitely, that's a little bit of tilt trading on my part. I do not trade like, uh, like this, but uh, it's a little, bit, a little bit cleaner there. But yeah, clean uh, fade off the 55s. We are pushing kind of back there, uh, about a 50% reversion from 55s to 45s, back into 50 there. Let's see what 50 has in store. Again, Reddit, long-awaited IPO, Sean. So I think this is not over. Over yet. We got day two, we got the whole week, we got the first week, we got to yeah. see how it kind of sets up, how the weekly, how the monthly sets up. This is a new player on the block. So Reddit is going to be definitely uh, not, not, on, not in play every day, but uh, definitely going to be on watch in the first few days of the IPO. And maybe we got another, we got another name for being in play, right? Out of the thousands of tickers uh, yeah. that, uh, that do move. Because that's have what you, we need. We need more names here. Have you ever looked at uh, uh, the Wilshire 5000? Have you ever heard of that? I have not heard of it nor looked at it. I, 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 I happen to find, find it. Uh, it's just like a, here, uh, I'll pull it up. Uh, it, it was a, it's an interesting, uh, interesting index. We'll okay. try 5,000. So it's like a market index. And uh, so, so whenever I say oh, lots of tickers, I'm like, yeah, the 5,000 in this Wilshire uh, got price a nice index with 5,000 tickers in it. So interesting, pushing very high. But like, I don't know. I, I just discovered this recently. So I was just like, uh, I don't know if a lot of people know about it. But nothing really uh, that I don't think you, it's, tr it's tradable. It's just an index there. But uh, interesting stuff. Um, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people uh, in the chat, kind of uh, uh, talking about the, the conversation that we had. Yeah, it's just Nike. Just do it. I do have to. I do have to f have to embody that uh, that motto there. Uh, definitely. I think it was Quan Tran saying, "Yeah, less talking, be more about it." Yeah, Nike. Just do it. That's what I got to get better at. Building that confidence. And it's a, again, it's a work in progress. I do have to have a little bit more sense of urgency there, uh, for sure. That's something I'm trying to work on. Again. Um, like we talked about, working out, building those reps, yeah. building, building, that, uh, building that muscle, uh, building those trading muscles, right? And kind of uh, recognition and gut instinct as well a little bit. Um, 50 holding as of right now on Reddit there. So uh, again, not really doing anything much here uh, in terms Where of me taking nice trade. Here. Yeah, it, it, worked, it worked real quick, but it, it kind of held this, yeah. this like, short-term trend that we're, we're having, right? So if you pull up... Uh, you pull up the Reddit on, on, a, uh, on a one minute, two minute, three minute chart. We did kind of break trend here. If you throw up a moving average or what, what say you to kind of define your trend, we did break trend in and around this 46, 47 ish area. And then now we're right, holding we and pushing out. back up into that 50 there. 
here. So let's see what 50 has in store. It is kind of that VWAP area. Uh, what, what do I have as VWAP here? I have 5083. And uh, we kind of went pretty much close, about 15, 20 pennies away from that. What's the high there? High is 50, 65. So yeah, this is accurate here. 50, 60s is the high, and then 50, 83 was, uh, was in and around VWAP. So as of right now, we are kind of heavy, uh, heavy at VWAP, heavy at the 50% retracement of this flush that we've had. So let's see what we got in store. Again, I got nothing else uh, on, uh, on the board for Reddit there, but uh, Apple, that 171, Definitely a little bit interesting there. I initially tried the longs, oh, got below, good. tried the short, right, held it right back up. But I think I got to reassess this kind of short there. Kind of be, I, think, I think if I'm looking for it to flush uh, off that 71 and, and I was trying the longs, the stop definitely, uh, I think it should be a little bit tighter there because of what I'm looking for, right? This is, not, this is not necessarily what I was looking for. I don't know what the market's going to do. I don't know what Apple is going to do, but the stop definitely can be managed a little bit better there. There goes Reddit flushing off that 50. Are you still holding? Come on, dog. Damn, nice trade, Sean. All right, there we go. So we've still got two-thirds of this trade back on board, and, I mean, there it is. So we'll see. We're actually bidding 48.25. It just went to 48.50. We're short right now at 50 bucks. So good little trade here for Reddit. Let's see if we do get a downside push. I mean, we could just bid. I mean, I'm bidding 48.26, uh, but it's just bouncing off some of those levels right there. So why don't we just flip it up here? Um, okay, see, now, I mean, now it could go down, right? I mean, this is the whole point about this. We're having a lot of fun here. Uh, but it is holding some levels, so we'll find out about that one. Uh, right now, look what just happened here. DraftKings moving around right now. I don't know if there's some news, but there's some volume coming into DraftKings, and we just sort of talked about this, so maybe something happening. Uh, we do got a Dara over there. She'll let us know if there is anything uh, that she's seeing on DraftKings, but right now it is what it is. Uh, not moving around too much. It looks like we will get stopped out of Apple. Um, you know, we made some, we actually we made some money, but not much here on that first take of 172 long. Then we've, you know, down 4% into a market that's now going back up to the upside. So there it is, we will get stopped out. I'll slap a fail on it, but we've already talked about that. It is not a fail. We made some money there on Apple. Um, and then just for anybody else watching, we are out of 60% of our AMD. Okay, I'm very excited to hear what Adara has to say as well. So let's go back over to Adara. She's very excited to give us this. So it is, I have DraftKings related news. So this RSI here, Rush Street Interaction, this one, massive spike here on volume after uh, it's been reported this one is weighing a sale and that it has approached DraftKings. So DraftKings fits into this, also getting a volume spike, probably the whole, highest volume candle of the day here. So DraftKings and RSI, Rush Street Interactive, on watch with this report. Guys, I'll let you know if I see anything else. All right, DraftKings. Yeah, I, I still don't. I don't really understand that story. I mean, I see it on here because they're trying to s sell what? So I'm just trying to figure out. They're trying to sell something that they already. Okay, so I they're always have, trying to sell something, Sean. They're always trying to sell something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, first one's always free. Okay, we'll find out um, more about. It. It's actually not this story right here. I don't think that we just had Kingsbridge Behavioral Health Expanded Program. No, that's treatment for problems, uh, gambling, I guess. Okay, uh, so we'll pass on that one for now. Um, and then I'm just going to still continue to look uh, to see about that DraftKings, but I do, I did, uh, Dara just said that story there, so we'll weigh what's happening here with DraftKings, and I'm going to wait uh, to see the release on that one. What's, uh, what's the high on DraftKings that you have over there on that, the, the little... Uh the shake and bake that we just had off of 48. That. 48s? I got 49s here. That's huh? pretty wild there. Um, 49 high. Yeah, I, was, I was curious. I was like, wait, how come that wick only goes to 48? Um, but yeah, no, some strong action there. Check, check this out on the one minute. Rush so, yeah, Street Interactive shares one halted. Minute. So let me just see on the second chart here. So we don't have Rush Street. Is it a Canadian yeah. company? RSI is the symbol. Oh, that happened real quick, Sean. That was like that. That print happened within uh, within a 10, 10 second uh, right, okay. time frame there. So maybe maybe just uh, who knows? Maybe off the off the off the news, a quick fat finger or whatever. But it kind of slams right back in and does what it goes back to doing what it was doing pretty much uh, for 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 the past couple of hours there, uh, churning and uh, chopping and churning in and around that forty seven forty eight level here on uh, on DraftKings. So nothing too crazy, it would seem. Uh, sure, it has an initial reaction to that uh, to that news potentially, but oh. it comes back and does. Uh, nothing. So yeah, I'm not. I'm, I'm also going to do the same. I'm going to. I'm going to go back to uh, what I was doing and do nothing on uh, on the DraftKings there. But uh, yeah, let's take a quick look 
at uh, some of the, some of these large caps, see how they've kind of panned out on I'll the day Apple. there. Damn, yeah, man. Apple's kind of Apple, it Apple's still, Yeah, it's 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 kind of like just choppy there. on that one one seventy one. So I went long, I went short. I was like, yeah, no, I, I don't want to necessarily get involved if it's going to stay that choppy. I don't really have a direction on it there. But let's take a quick look. At uh, do a quick market uh, uh, pulse check. I know I, I'm so used to starting off with Apple. You know what? Let's do some uh, do some justice. Let's start off with Softy because Softy is the leader of uh, of constituents right now in the market. Um, and let's see how long it stays. I think uh, I think oh, it, I think it will kind of uh, hold its place for a little bit there. But. Uh, Softy, pretty much sideways. We were, we were looking at this earlier today. Um, uh, let me just close that. Didn't really venture too far away from its uh, its opening price or or VWAP there on Softy. Let's take a quick look at Apple. We know what Apple's been doing. Apple's strong quadrum to the downside off the open. D, uh, DOJ. Uh, Investigating Apple for for some uh, for some shenanigans that they that they may or may not have been up to, but uh, catching a sell oh, for sure. So the sentiment, yeah, definitely. With them slowing, look well, at Apple now. Once 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 you realize once you saw that they were kind of slowing down phones on purpose and they were willing to pay off those fines. Oh yeah, yeah, being yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Slow down on that. Slow whoa, down on that. Like. Are they slowing down phones on purpose? I mean, the thing is, is that once you start to have huge upgrades on your platform i almost feel like it's oh like, is that the re- is that the excuse that they gave yeah because it's like their processors can't handle it they keep upgrading this and that and yada 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 so i'm with so what you. you're telling me is that your software is getting less and less optimal okay never yes mind. less and less optimal <laughs> uh optimus prime uh, on that one but I, I as you're talking there by by the way everybody there it is right there spin it one more time that's 75 cents on amd and we're out and that's my bad uh, I didn't realize I had two bids down there. I had one at 79.50, 179.50, and then when it came back in, I was like, let's take a 60. So we take a 50. Uh, do we even get a 50? What was it, 50 exactly? Yes, 51 and 61. So we get a 61 there and a 51 out of AMD as we approach these levels. I would have liked to hold it, but we didn't have that opportunity. Um, and then there's the flow. Well, we did have the opportunity, but I forgot about that order there pending. Um, nice little flush to the downside right there, bouncing off 171 and change, and I guess Reddit can uh, go back to sort of Deadsville there. We should have had a, a bid there. We were bidding at the 50 period, which at that time, or is still, in and around that 48.20. So we'll wait. Did you guys just see that? My chart just flash? No. Are, are you kidding, <laughs> Ramin? <laughs> that was so fast. She... David, get out of here. <laughs> She, like I know, her, her response I was know like, that I have many issues, <laughs> but now like I'm questioning my vision and everything <laughs> like that. Uh, but no, oh, I feel justified because at one point we got to go to Adair because she's really excited to bring more news. The thing is, is that um, we had a uh, a viewer actually screen cap. Oh, I, I was here that a, time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. A blank Last screen. Time. Because, and, and it showed like a little login logo or something yeah. behind it. Um, so it, it was justified at that point. But uh, okay, we'll just move on on that uh, and go see what's up with Adara. Continuing to have the highest volume candles of the day right now for RSI. This is Rush Street Interactive. This one did open uh, to the upside after the halt, now trading lower. Uh, no confirmation yet, but there were some reports that this one is considering, uh, this company, Rush Street Interactive, is considering a sale, and they've approached DraftKings with regards to a potential deal. So that was why DKNG had that uh, move as well there. No, again, no confirmation. If I see anything else, I will let you know. But some reports circulating around that RSI and DKNG might have a potential deal. And we are brought to you by Trade Ideas. Real-time scanning and alerting used in our desk by many of our traders every day. See what's moving in the moment with Trade Ideas. Check out the link in the description for 20% off. All right, thank you, Dara. So the move was on RSI, not necessarily DraftKings, it would seem. Yeah, so okay. I, misunder- I misunderstood that. Thank you, Derek, for clarifying it. So um, it is this Rush Street Interactive looking to put themselves up for sale and then DraftKings a potential suitor for that. And I was typing in RSI here and nothing was coming up. So uh, I had a Sharif moment of panicking that we didn't know what that symbol was. And then we wound up finding it. So uh, right there, RSI, well, Adara found it and I just copied her. So nice little move to the upside. I don't know enough about this, but hey, I don't blame any company that was $3 uh, back in October, up to $8 right now, and saying that they want to get for sale. Uh, I don't know enough about this. It's obviously a nice move to the downside, nicely done here. I, you know, 
I always get a little worried whenever companies say this kind of stuff, but we'll, we'll wait to hear what happens right now. RSI potentially on watch, and we'll see if there's a buyout candidate there for any of you traders that are, you know, buyout traders or whatever uh, on that one. We can discuss that when that does come through. Uh, Apple, of course, making, you know, more movements to the downside, so that kind of doesn't surprise me. Uh, we'll wait to see if there is anything with that. Um, and then Reddit's kind of flat right now for us. Oh, this is what I want to talk about. What about this? Let's go. Let's see if we can moon finally here on iBit. Hey, you know, every time you got a positive day on a stock, you should celebrate it a little bit. We are now up on Bitcoin uh, today on iBit. As we bought these bottoms, we talked about a possible hold there of 65,000. We zoomed back the Bitcoin chart out. We looked at it. And again, this is kind of what I'm talking about with me and Obi. It's like, I don't have any experience trading iBit. I could sit here and be like, I don't know anything about iBit. I've never looked at it before. But at the same time, you know, we're going long in it. We're trying it out. And, and what I can say about some of this discussion is that um, what's the RSI and RSI? That's a really good one. Who just mentioned <laughs> that? Zamalek right now. We can find out the RSI right here on iBit is 53. Uh, you know what? Maybe I can maybe zoom this back out. This is on the daily chart, of course, uh, for that. I'm going to zoom this out a little bit higher so we can talk about RSI more often. Um, but maybe um, Obi... You know, in order to get a little more confidence, the one thing that we could also do is, um, and I started doing this when I was looking at new strategies for the show, is that if you're thinking about, like you're like, okay, I like this trade, but I'm not 100% sure about it, go with like 10% of your share size. So yeah. almost the opposite of holding 10%, just start with that. Yeah. You know, so that way, okay. if it blasts up on you and you're just wrong on something, you could be like, okay, this is what it is, blah, blah, blah. I only have 10%, so I only lost 10 bucks instead of 100 bucks, yeah. you know. Something like that. Anyways, um, you okay. know, we're all we're all like, here. So. Like ease into it, and as it as if and when it starts working, that's when you really kind of push closer yep. to your 100 percent of the position. More, um, more if, uh, more when, not if. Actually, because uh, as I said, I think you're you're going to be uh, great. So, all right, let's go back over to Adara. More news. Just a look here at some of the biggest movers in the S&P 500 that maybe we didn't get to talk about earlier today. Some of these are going to be earnings names, including Accenture, ACN, this one porting a EPS beat, but a sales miss, and also projecting revenue largely below expectations for the fall or for the next quarter. So almost 10% to the downside for ACN. Next up, Broadcom, very much the upside. This one getting an upgrade from TD Cohen and a price target of 1500. So really nice look here for AVGO. Last but not least, here we have uh, this one up here as well. I'm just trying. There we go. Uh, but yeah, lots of movers here on the S&P 500 as we head into the end of the day, guys. All right. Thank you, Adara. That 171, Sean, coming right back in. So uh, a little bit of a chop, chop and don't. churn, just kind of uh, very, very choppy. And there goes Reddit past that 50 mark. Ugh. Will we get to VWAP? VWAP is at 50 80s. We are coming in real hot. Where is my Reddit chart? All right, there it is. All right, I got, I got a lot of charts here. I've been switching around screens and uh, windows. All right, there's my Reddit chart. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, that 5090. So we are testing that VWAP area right now on Reddit. What is that previous high? 5170s right here. Previous high, 5170s-ish right here on that high. So if we kind of break past that point, how many stops will we take out? That was a great short. Anyways, the only real pullback that we kind of had, uh, and then for the continuation back to the downside going into 50, again, all retrospect. But uh, yeah, this price kind of interesting. If we can get back into there, into the close, we were talking about how uh, even with uh, even with the A-Lab trade yesterday, I don't know if A-Lab kind of did that in, into the close. A bit of a, a bit of a pop into the close or no? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. We had a bit of a pop into the close as it closed uh, high of day on ALAB yesterday, and it seems like today we had a bit of continuation, giving back uh, most of the move that we did today. But uh, yeah, to take a quick look at this ALAB IPOs yesterday, and into the close, not very distinct, not really squeezy, but it does hold above view up and kind of uh, uh, push up in towards those, those highs, opens, and then continues that move before taking a little bit of a breather off of 80 on the dot, Sean, 80, 80.00 80 high on A Labs right now. But uh, RDDT is the is the is the main uh, is the main uh, squeeze today, um, but uh, let's see if the squeeze is really on on Reddit. Uh, let's see if we can get past this VWAP right here. 
this high from before. I have no idea. I'm watching. I'm patiently waiting. Again, with only about 15, uh, uh, what is this? Uh, yeah, roughly about 15 to 17 minutes left on the day. Um, I don't really have too many trades on the board there. I did take a couple shots there uh, on a few names. Didn't really, uh, didn't really work out too well. And again, we, you, you got to remember today we kind of uh, started off with uh, with uh, our orders kind of down and uh, a little laggy. So that was a little uh, uh, hit on the mindset there. Wasn't really prepared for a lot of the trades I did kind of plan on. And obviously Reddit being uh, um, the, the head honcho on the day in terms of movers and in terms of eyes on uh, was not well prepared for that initial move. Oh boy, was it a move right through that 50. I think it was funny. I was running over to my desk. And it had opened. We were screaming. I was in the bathroom. Um, and just uh, as I'm walking, literally not even five meters, uh, five meters back there, they're like, it's open, I just into a, into a brisk, uh, brisk pace right back to the desk. And I'm like, all right, sick, building up into 50, get long, uh, get long, default, whatever share size I have set up. Oh, I got to do better than that. And then take it into 52, jitter in, jitter out. That was not well uh, that was not well executed at all. No reason to really sell if you take a look at the chart there uh, uh, on, a, on a one minute or even a three minute, uh, two, two or three minute chart there. No real reason to sell until we kind of break back below this 55-ish area here after kind of uh, slapping up into that 57 and sellers kind of slapping it right back down. So Reddit going to stay interesting over the next uh, couple of days. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see. I'll be here. I'll be here next week, uh, and hopefully Reddit will uh, will give us some give some decent moves there. Let's see how the price action builds up in the first couple of days. And yeah, it's kind of like uh, kind of similar to I guess earnings. I I, I don't want to give it the same kind of thing as earnings day one, but like you have a significant amount of volume that. No, comes we need in. to look at it every day pretty much. I mean, yeah. although we didn't look at A Lab today. Yeah, A Lab A Lab I think definitely was worth a look today because of what it did. Like straight continuation, we've hit 70s uh, off of a 64 65 close yesterday. Yesterday, very strong close on the day, and like, can you look for continuation? Maybe off the open, if it's there, and it definitely was. Um, uh, maybe going forward, that's something I do have to watch. If uh, if an IPO closes strong on the day, look for a potential continuation. The next day, maybe some dip buys as well. I have no idea. I just broke 51 there, so it's a good thing we took out a third uh, for that. But uh, there's the Reddit for. We are now Reddit. On Reddit? No, we're now red on Reddit. Uh, right there, what was that joke that we had before? I already Red on it. Reddit. Red on Reddit, okay. So there it goes up to the upside right there on that last trade. So um, yeah, it was. we should have just stopped right there, uh, actually. Um, this was flat and then we'll go, we'll, we'll put a cup, cup of coffee back on Reddit right there. Not, if we didn't get out there, it would have been worse, but you know, not a great trade there to end uh, the day on Reddit, but that's honestly, it's perfectly fine. Um, we got out there, uh, more out there at 30 on this. I didn't even realize, Obi, I mean, I mentioned this earlier about what kind of a day we've had here today. It's been, like, I can't even, like, do you realize it's 346? Yeah. Like, isn't that time, wild? Time like, I guess we had flying. Frank on, time probably yeah. flew there. But, like, I was just looking down, yeah. and I was starting to get, think about getting out of some of my positions, and I was thinking, like, all right, what time is it? Are we ready for this yet? Because I was like, maybe I'll get back into Apple or this and that. And then I looked down, and I was like, we have imbalances in three minutes. Yep. So, again, we started the day today with the NASDAQ, you know, kind of well up a little bit. Um, you know, we had some good news from Micron uh, kicking it off here. We had, uh, I think it was, a, was it a new intraday high in NVIDIA today? It touched 927. We'll have a double shot at that. Uh, look at that before we close off here. Uh, but then the NASDAQ's basically been faded all day. And I think the number one culprit, and we'll talk about this on the uh, recap show. And actually, I'm going to change it. Uh, right now, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Apple there with the sector recap. So we'll update that board uh, to talk about Apple into the recap show. But yeah, I was just saying that I feel that it wasn't a nice day for Apple. These are just some of the open imbalances right now. They're just New York names, TD Bank with the largest sell there. So we'll worry about that when it gets there. But Apple down four and a bit today. A little bit of trouble spot there for sure for investors in this name as we get jittery on DOJ investigations and whatnot. So we'll hear if there's any more to come on Apple. But yeah, I mean, we could see 170 tomorrow. You break 170, it's a problem. We'll probably be short tomorrow on Apple unless something comes from this. This could be a while here on Apple, which is why we just, we tested the long here at 172. We left it alone. We felt bad not getting short earlier and then we just shorted right now. And unfortunately, this happens to all of us, Obi, like we said, uh, there's the stop out. Um, and if we didn't do that, I mean, now we're starting to make bottoms again. But hey, these are the trades that we put on. And, you know, 
happy with the way Apple worked there. We're going to be positive on it, and a positive stock is a positive stock. So Apple trying to. Print. I mean, look how look how well that worked, right? You you you, you like you made your money on it, and yeah. then it, it was it more stops radio. you out once. Yeah, that's right. It. Yeah, it broke so I think I think I think uh, that was that's for a, eight cents. Yeah, that's pretty. That, that's that's probably, what I was saying to you before. It's about like just trying to figure out the risk to reward. Yeah. At the end of the day, you just hope they put up a green number. For All right, sure. um, yeah, with only a minute left, uh, yeah, just me and you going back and forth right now. So, yeah, I'm just looking for the imbalances to come out. Yeah, I, Reddit actually broke that 50, 50, 51 there. Yep. Um, uh, again, still in and around VWAV. I want to give it a point uh, plus minus. But something I do want to mention, Sean, we, we just talked about a ticker kind of closing near its highs off of a catalyst or even a IPO day or whatever it is. But take a look at Apple. Apple is, uh, well, 15 more minutes, or 10, 11 more minutes. Apple, on a catalyst, is about to close near low of day. Yes, So the sir. question I'm asking myself is... Self? What is, this, what is it going to do tomorrow? What's the probability of continuation? How many times does this happen? Right? And then, uh, those are all the questions. Now, I don't have the data for that. But uh, if and when a ticker uh, does a move like this from open to close, very, very strong on catalyst and Arvol, what is the probability of continuation for the next day? What's the range? I have no idea, but these are the questions kind of uh, going through my head. Here are the imbalances. Let's see what we got on uh, on here, right here. Okay, so uh, do you see anything? Oh, I didn't crazy even notice there? that was uh, uh, Intel with a one uh, one point here. I can pull it up. Marissa right here. was letting me know that she still didn't get groceries, and then I uh, I, I, I missed it. Uh, okay. Um, Apple with a one one mil buy, roughly one mil. Pe uh, Peloton you got Intel with a one point three. Um, uh, what is this, WBD? Is that uh, that's is, that's not Warner Brothers, is it? WBD? Uh, uh, yes, it is. I think. I think so. Uh, yes, because that, there that was is Paramount Warner Brothers. News. Yeah, yeah, that's Warner Brothers. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I was watching Para as well. Para had Para had news yesterday for that uh, for that potential buyout, right? And it kind of gave back most of its move. Uh, today, about 50% of that strong move that we had. I was watching it going into the close yesterday, and I was like, damn, this thing is not catching a sell at all. No real relief. A little bit of a pullback into VWAP, and then the bid kind of just continues to, to, to bid it up. But off the open, kind of uh, d uh, distinctly different from this action there. Pulling back and consolidating, what is this? In and around 11, 11.80. So maybe, I don't know what that bio price is right now or the proposed bio price. So maybe it is in, in and around there. I, I got to do more research on that. Reddit comes back into 50 off of that 51. So that VWAP is rejecting as of right now with only about nine minutes left to go into the close. So yeah. Nothing too crazy. I'm not really. I'm not really seeing anything too too much here that's really worth uh, worth taking potentially. But uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a wild day. It Again, happened. lots to improve on. I gotta do. I gotta do better at uh, at some of these IPOs. Like this is not my first IPO. It's not my first rodeo for an IPO. But not being there, not being at the desk, not being prepared effectively, and kind of just like rushing into it. Clearly, um, uh, I think. Uh, and also getting tilted over that, like, yeah, sure, I wasn't prepared, but why, why, why like, control your emotions, dude? Why am I getting tilted uh, at the lows after seeing some size and uh, doing multiple punches? I got to do better at that. Um, Frank Jones talking about Frank AI Jones. down and UPST too. So, yeah, let's take a quick look at AI. AI is a name uh, I haven't looked at in a while. Since that ARM IPO, uh, I think uh, eyes were kind of taken off of, uh, off of AI and maybe some, uh, some other AI names as well. But ARM, uh, sorry, AI to the downside. Let's see what ARM is up to. Uh, ARM I haven't looked at in a few weeks. ARM still holding this uh, with this 122. I think we did talk about it this morning, if I'm not mistaken there. Um, but yeah, ARM holding it. that 122, 121 area as of right now. We talked about that being kind of that earnings day one, day two, uh, day three interesting levels. We were holding above all of those as of right now. And just, just kind of uh, chopping in this 120, 120s to 130s area uh, over since, when, when is this? This was, uh, I guess, March 12th. So a little bit of a shake and bake and kind of sideways action there. But definitely a lot of opportunities if you are watching is what I realized there, but not a name I was watching today in particular. Um, Reddit coming back into that 50. Ah, uh, boo, Reddit. Soundhound, Teddy the Trader talking about sound dropping to my 6.51 target. Soundhound, I was looking at this ticker. Why? 
you may ask, because this is doing a lot of volume. It's one of the volume leaders on the market right there. What's Cavill? Huh, interesting. All right, we'll take a look at that one later. Um, but yeah, SoundHound, again, AI ticker, right? Uh, the first question that comes to my mind is what is NVIDIA doing? Because NVIDIA has a bid on SoundHound, right? They, they said we're, we're invested in SoundHound and RxRx as well, a pharmaceutical company that may have relations to AI. But um, SoundHound, definitely a volume leader and straight flush to the downside, what is NVIDIA doing? NVDA. All right, so NVIDIA not really looking like that, but strong, uh, strong sell off of the open, pretty much sideways for the rest of the day. But SoundHound, quite the move. Uh, was it uh, Teddy the Trader? So yeah, I, I would assume that you're short, saying that your, so your uh, take profit is in and around that 650s area. So nice, nice trade, dude. Uh, that is very, very clean to the downside in a retrospect off of the open. I, know, I don't know if it had uh, a catalyst or anything. It's not really doing uh, too much Arvol, but it is breaking down. Actually, wow, you know what? Let me pull this up right here. Talk about technicals. Oh boy. Uh, look at this distinct kind of uh, uh, level here, this kind of shelf in and around this 750, 760-ish. Kind of bounce off of it, can't really get back, get back through VWAP, and then look at that volume that comes in when that uh, multi-week, yeah, multi-week level, or over the past couple of weeks, that level breaks. You get that nice little strong flush with volume. I like that confirmation, uh, and then straight flush to the downside there on Soundhound. So a great trade, nice. Um, yeah, end of day, five minutes left, nothing too crazy. Imbalances didn't really come out too spicy there. I'm watching uh, uh, absolutely nothing in terms of the imbalances right now. People talking about Reddit swing. I have no idea, dude. Uh, Reddit swing. Um, but yeah, if you believe in the company, uh, again, they've been around for a while, like I said. The yeah. anticipation has been big for a couple of years. They've been trying to IPO. And uh, finally, today's the day. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it's pretty strong, pretty decent IPO there, um, in, in my opinion. You had some really aggressive uh, buying off the open that was very, very uh, beautiful, uh, to say the least. Decent opportunities all over the place today. We are. I'm gonna have to go over there and get uh, the party started uh, for us on um, the closing show. But you just uh, killed a lot of time there, so thank you for that, Obi. Um, but all right. So the only thing that we have left right now is going to be uh, to talk about some of these earnings plays uh, that we're looking at now. I do have iBit left, and I'm just looking at it. We're long at 37.11 with only four minutes to go, so we're gonna have to uh, get out of this momentarily, but someone asked about the implied moves. They're all roughly the same right now. So um, implied moves all over the place now with Nike, FedEx, and Lululemon, seven, six, and eight, uh, basically, as you guys can see there on the board. Uh, we had last time, we had a couple good moves for both of these names, um, including both Reddit and uh, Dara sent me a message because I asked her uh, to see what was going on. So Nike's last move was down 12%, so we'll see if that hits today. Uh, again, for those guys uh, on the downside, Lulu Lulu's last move was basically flat. Uh, both estimates, obviously, for profitability as both Nike, FedEx, and Lululemon all get ready to rock and roll into the close. So those are a little bit of expectations there, and I feel like uh, expectations are high uh, right now because of where the market is at all-time highs, although pulling off of that today, and it's uh, Obi, you and I often talk about that. Sometimes when the market's near those highs, you do get those pullbacks, and we definitely got one of those today as well. So nice little pullback today for many of the names, um, including Apple, oh, yeah. which sort of started this whole problem. So, um, All right, only three minutes left. Good job today, Obi. I'll see you tomorrow, uh, and I'll see everybody in a couple minutes on Monday. Uh, who's doing... Oh my God, it's Brankles tomorrow. Oh, I forgot all. I know you mentioned that yesterday, and I was like, oh, Obi's yeah, yeah. just confused about the day. But no, we've got Brankles in the building tomorrow. tomorrow. We've got Bra Brankles. Is that tomorrow? <laughs> Be quiet, Brankles. Uh, I'm going to assume that. I'm going to. I'm going to assume that that is happening. I'm not part of that. So, all right. Um, all right. Uh, I'll see Brankles tomorrow. And if not, I'll see somebody else. Maybe Brenda will be sitting beside me. All right. I got two minutes to go and I got to go over to the desk. So thank you, Obi. Have a great trip, my guy. Um, thank great you for day. filling in today. And I'll see you next week, apparently. Yeah. All right. Thank all right. You, yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, guys, again for uh, spending your day with us. If you've been here throughout the day, hopefully you got some, uh, you got some value out of it and uh, some crazy, crazy moves. 
uh, indeed today. In uh, There goes Apple. Apple bouncing off that 171 going into the close. So it seems like we might catch a bid finally off of, uh, off of uh, I guess, maybe imbalances going into the close with only about two minutes left. I got to remember to hit, uh, hit the countdown properly this time. The past couple of times I have been talking over the countdown. So I do have my time. It's funny. Uh, one of the traders in the back there, they asked me, they were like, Obi, where is your clock? I'm like, buddy, look at all the tapes I have. This is my clock right here. A very liquid clock nonetheless, if, especially if you're looking at one of the large caps right there. So uh, 1558, 42 as of right now. Again, it's giving me, it's giving me uh, millisecond countdowns uh, on, uh, on the tape there. So yeah, thanks guys. I will, uh, will definitely uh, be, try to be safe in, uh, in New York. I'm, uh, uh, I got a couple of friends there, so you know they, they know the lay of the land. So uh, I think I'll be in good hands for sure. But uh, yeah, enjoy uh, enjoy your weekend, enjoy your uh, day tomorrow. Uh, happy trading! I will see you guys next week. We've got about a minute left. Um, throw up throw up some ideas. Reddit to the moon. Apparently, I don't know uh, who said that. Uh, TP saying Reddit to the moon. Um, all right, so yeah, we'll have, we have yet to see again. Like I said, it's going to be interesting to see how this ticker kind of pans out. It has been anticipated for a very, very long time. Again, it could be nothing, it could be something, but this 50, uh, 50 hold is interesting. 57 highs, 45 lows as of right now. Only got about 20 seconds left with Adara stepping up to the bell. How's it going, Adara? <laughs> all right, so. With about, okay, I gotta, I gotta time it properly. Five seconds left. All right, boom, right here. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Thank you, Adara. All right, so the market closing near its lows there. As we pushed into the close, you can see this quadunk of a candle that we kind of had uh, on both the futures there. So it's been, it's been great. Um, solid day. I got lots to improve on. Gonna be, uh, gonna try to get a little bit better every day. Trading is definitely a journey here. I'm so thankful to be around more experienced traders. Again, Sean was mentioning about uh, about the whole roller coaster analogy, and yeah, I definitely need that. I de definitely um, uh, look for that. Uh, look for that guidance from more experienced traders to kind of help me on my trading journey, and that is the journey that I am on myself. But uh, you guys ready at the at the big desk there? Without any further ado, don't go anywhere. Sean is gonna, uh, Sean is gonna be there with you guys for the market recap and what is on earnings today. Some big earnings today. We're talking about, uh, uh, I think it was uh, uh, FedEx. We got Nike. Oh boy, am I gonna miss out on Nike day one earnings? But I'll be back for day two on earnings. But without any further ado, join Sean with the market recap at the big desk. I'll see you guys around. Take care. See ya. Thank you, Obi. Yeah, we got nothing else to do but then another show right now. So uh, here it is. It is the Market Recap Show. Today's going to be a good one because we've got Miss Danielle Shea coming through. So that should be a heck of a lot of fun uh, coming through for tonight. So we'll welcome Danielle coming out. And we have to mention that this show is brought to you by Benzinga Pro. Um, get the, you know, get this locked and loaded. We're going to have our earnings coming through right now. We are going to say a big welcome to everybody that's staying with us. Of course, Danielle wants to talk all about tech, so we'll do that. Thank you to everybody that's here, and a big thank you again. Thank you, Obi. Thank you, Andrew, for mentioning that again. What a good one. Feels like a free fall Friday coming, potentially. Uh, we did see some sort of, uh, I guess, uh, chinks in the armor today as Apple went back down to the downside, and we'll talk about that. We will wait to see when some of these big earnings plays come through, including everything that's on the board there. Nike, Lulu, and FedEx is really what we're looking for. All right, I mean, today's day was really destructed by Apple. I mean, we got that DOJ news coming through on AAPL, and yeah, it was a pretty negative story there um, with, I think it was 16 states now looking into what's going on with Apple. So it's a nice downside push, and of course you can see here, let's go to a five-minute chart. Boom. I mean, we had such a great run up. If we flip over to the daily, what a great run it was for Apple. All of that taken out in one day. It's Hydration Nation. All right. Um, again, really brings the NASDAQ down with it. But fortunately enough for us, today the NASDAQ was a green day. Nice little rally there um, into the, uh, at the open. But to close, it did pull back. There's the NASDAQ making brand new all-time highs today. So, you know, sometimes that's a reason enough to sell it. I don't know. I feel like weakness in the market. I kind of am like, I, I listen to other people and they say like, good news, 
you know, bad news is good news and good news is bad news. And I just want good news. I mean, I would rather the market not have a healthy pullback. I mean, what we can do is also set stop orders. So if we do get that monster day that just flushes down like NASDAQ down three, four, 5%, like, you know, maybe those days is what we need for capitulation to the downside. But I'd rather not just see a high and then fade out and then just keep on fading to the downside. So I don't know if that's a reason enough to sell highs today, but that is what happened uh, on the NASDAQ. And you could see it's a nice push down, kind of starts midday and in around noon. And then there's the flush back into the close today. Um, not a great day. We saw PDD uh, yesterday give up some earnings. Today, again, same kind of move back down into 122. If you just look at yesterday's trade, look where PDD was, up at 151. I mean, this flush down today, again, another 7% down for PDD. So potentially, man, some of these Chinese names will continue to get hit uh, down into the downside there. What were some stories maybe today? Let me just quickly have a look here. Um, and sometimes Adara will send me some sector highlights. Uh, not much happening today. I mean, industrials, we had a monster move up so we can go on. Was it XLI? Are those the industrials? Yes, it is. So again, nice move upside today. Look at this. I mean, you want to talk about GE, General Electric, really pumping to the high side. We've sold all of our GE. It was a good move for that. We talked about Caterpillar, Deer. Look at XLI, man, just really breaking out again to the upside. A lot of talk about IWM. I got to put IWM up on here. Uh, we don't have it as a small cap sector there, but the Russell 2000 ETF starting to get going. And this is a more interesting name because on the weekly chart, you can see we've just taken this level out. So I think Brendan and I talked about this on one of the past podcasts, IWM, one of the only kind of major ETFs, I'm not talking about TAN or lithium or anything like that, but um, IWM trying to break higher. All right, let's go over now. We do have, oh, uh, I got to put this back out here. Let's get a one minute chart going. Lululemon is apparently out. So let's find out what Lulu's doing right now. We were expecting from Lululemon again. We were expecting to get uh, 3.2 billion, EPS forecast $5.1. We'll figure out what's going on. Uh oh. Whoever's selling Lululemon ain't a friend of mine, but there it goes to the downside right now. Lululemon getting clocked down 4% here. If I can go over to Benzinga, I will get those numbers. I don't see them on Benzinga platform yet, but Lululemon is getting hit down to the downside right now. So um, there it goes down. Thank you so much, Lulu to the downside. Oh my God, Lulu's tanking. I mean, I think sometimes we've got to slow stuff down and worry about what a tank actually is. Down 4%, not too much, but there it is, 7%. So here's Lululemon. Gap, EPS beat, uh, beat 529 versus 497. Sales, beat on sales. It must be the guide. So right now we're seeing a top and a bottom line beat on Lululemon right now. We will pay attention for the guide because you know what? No matter what I say, you know, Ball, don't lie. Lululemon making the moves to the downside. This does not bode well for Nike, in my opinion. So there is the flush down on Nike. Someone fat fingers Nike down, potentially making a play on Lululemon earnings as Nike starting to go down to the downside right now, uh, down into 100 bucks. Let's flash back to Lulu. We will wait for American, Exp uh, not American Express, sorry, my bad. FedEx uh, coming out. So Lululemon still, the only numbers I have is a gap EPS beat of 529 versus 497 estimate. They also beat on sales. Three, uh, 3.205 billion versus 3.194 billion. So it's a top and bottom line beat. I'm guessing there's a little bit of a guidance issue. But as Brendan mentioned earlier today, you are sort of, um, you know, making a nice little frown, uh, smiley face to the upside, but that smiley face is going to turn upside down in a quick minute as we go back into 447 right now for Lululemon. So a little bit of a pushback in for that. I still don't see anything uh, the other way around right now. So that's Lululemon. We'll still check back in on Nike. Everybody in the chat will let me know. Uh-oh, it looks like Nike is flushing right now as well. So, okay. We talked about Nike possibly having a good quarter based on CPI from China being higher than expected and possible buys coming through on China. We talked about their holiday is a big gifting season that we just had the Chinese New Year uh, moving into the new year here as well, heading into summer months. Let's see if we can get a good guide 
from Nike. Remember, not just an athletic uh, shoe company, apparel as well. We know that spending, credit card spending is at all time highs as well. So I would have thought that could have been a benefit for both Lululemon and for Nike. But right now, I still feel like it's a fat finger. I don't see Nike earnings out. Uh, and then let's just go back over to Lulu one more time. Uh, there it is. So nice little downside move for Lulu. Now coming back. FedEx is now out. FedEx announces a $5 billion buyback program right now. Nice move up for FedEx. Maybe it's a flip, man. Maybe we got to get away from some of these tech names and go over into some of the industrial names like a transport here with FedEx, obviously shipping. So a lot of underlying stories here with FedEx. Wow, there it goes. A nice upside move for FDX. So everybody celebrate that. We'll see a big gap down there on earnings, man, right into support. But where's the report for FedEx? So let's go find out right now. There it is. FedEx higher third quarter. 351 versus 386. That seems like it's a miss. Um, so we'll wait to see if we get anything else on FDX. Third quarter diluted 351 um, and adjusted 386. Sorry. So that is going to be a beat. Here it is right here. 386 beats 345. Uh, sales miss, but they're beating on the top side. Plus add back the buyback for FedEx and we get a nice 10%. What? 10% move up for FedEx. That's a nice. Now FedEx right back up to those highs again. Hey, look, you want to doubt FedEx? This is what happens. They punch you in the mouth. Uh, nice move off of their last earnings report down to 249. Now FedEx goes, hello. Nice upside move. Bang on that one. We'll ask Miss Danielle Shea about FedEx as well. A nice upside move uh, on that one. Nice move for FedEx taking out some high levels right there. All right, let's, what's up with Lululemon? So here's what we're looking for. We thought maybe the guide might be weak because they beat on both ends, right? So right now, Lululemon, 217, uh, well, 2.17 billion to 2.2 versus, there it is right there. So the Q1 revenue uh, doesn't look great. Um, 225 looks like they're guiding to the low side. Uh, 235 to 240 versus 255. So definitely a low side guide there for Lululemon, sending their shares a little bit lower right now. I still don't see anything on Nike. So maybe Nike's not out, but wow, FTX, a big winner there uh, on that one. Wish we were in that. We could go find some of the other plays. UPS, look at this one. Bang to the upside on UPS. That's a good little look there. Let's just check back in on Lulu. Uh, yuck, hydration nation time. We had a fun time last night, by the way. It was a great time at that AEW event. I'm going to show you guys my kid. Um, for those of you, he was, he was absolutely loving it. Uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? This is me on the walk and talk, 1.6K. Thank you so much for all those views. This is what I was doing last night. Yeah, baby, here we are. Look at this. We were like 10 rows. So there's floor seats. Then we were right up here. Here's my guy right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then we were watching some wrestling, and it was a lot of fun there. This beer in my hand, that's 20 bucks. What, wait, what do you see it? Oh, it's 20 Canadian, though, so, you know, whatever. Okay, whatever. Maybe you don't see it. Anyway, there it is. Oh, there, oh, there it is right there. All right. Um, anyways, we'll, uh, you know, we're pretty, feeling pretty good. We're feeling pretty good. Uh, a little bit of a late night, but what's not feeling good is Lululemon as it's taking down lows right now. Lululemon, more downside pressure coming through that name. You know what's amazing? We keep talking about this every single day. What's up with the banks, man? Danielle, what's up with JP Morgan? When will this stop? When will the fun stop on some of these banks? XLF, upside, upside, upside. JP Morgan, Sean, why did we sell this name? Uh, up to $200 right now and just really like going crazy. Their report coming out pretty soon, man, April the 12th. The last time we had Danielle on, she was talking about potentially getting into some call options or at least looking because some of the bigger names to come through, including Microsoft, uh, they're coming April 30th. So we have a little bit of time to get involved with Microsoft. But look what happened to Microsoft today. New all-time highs. And I mean, last week when Danielle was here, maybe we were in the low to mid 400s, taking out highs. And I, I remember that was one of the plays that she had. And if not, and I'll give her credit for something that she doesn't uh, get, but she's been calling some nice longs in some of these names. She also mentioned to me about IBM. Maybe we could talk about IBM because that's also a nice little pullback in right now. Let me just double check what Reddit's doing right now in the aftermarket. Okay, kind of flat right now, so a nice little move there for Reddit uh, in the after hours as we wait to see what's going on there as well. Good day one 
for Reddit today. I mean, a lot of people are going to say, hey, maybe it wasn't that great, but you know what? It didn't fall completely on its face. Whoops, that's probably, uh, let's go to a three-minute chart uh, right now for Reddit. So here's the open. Nicely done to the upside, really got cooking. Um, and this is what you can expect from most IPOs, where you sort of get a few candles really early that are just going to go ham like this, right? Like a nice open all the way up to 58. That turned out to be the top. We didn't pay for shorts till the end of the day and then lost on the short. Uh, nice move down in there for Reddit. How did we trade Reddit, you might say? Or if you're not, if you didn't say that, too bad. Uh, we're going to show you right now. This is what we did on Reddit today. We left a pretty calm uh, day for us on Reddit. We didn't really put too much risk in here uh, as we you know, hit some of the tech names. But there was that dip buy. We wanted to play it back into VWAP. We've had Brian Shannon on the show. He has a chapter on anchored VWAP and how that trades. So we wanted to buy those dips into that. That was $3. Then we bought the 50 dip. We got out when it broke 50. Then we bought some 48s, got out, got out when it broke again. Then went short, took profit, got out when it broke 51. So kind of a flat day there on Reddit, but we are negative on that. And we'll be trading Reddit a lot, I would think, anyways, coming up in the very near future. So that was my day there on Reddit. And Danielle, we always talk about Tesla. So let's have a quick look at Tesla and see what's going on right there right now. We had some good trades on Tesla. Tesla actually a pretty top stock for me today. We wrote down on the sticky note, and by the way, where's that sticky note? There it is right there. We wrote down there uh, 74 longs on Reddit. So we'll go over to our, on, on, sorry, on Reddit, on Tesla today. And there it is right there, Tesla, 174 long, dips into yesterday's break level uh, with the FOMC. So that was a good trade there for Tesla. It dipped into 174. Our best outs, the 50 period up there at 175.20. So that's a dollar 20. Then it happened again. And that time we got VWAP up there at 175.50. So that was a bang up trade there on Tesla. I do want to say thank you to everybody for watching right now because it must be, you know, the Danielle Shea effect. We always have a nice amount showing up, over 3,000 right now, and whenever she's ready, we will call on Miss Danielle Shea and go over some of these uh, ideas that maybe she has uh, heading into over the next little while. So that's Reddit, it was a good day there. We did talk about XLU and utilities being the downside. And then finally, we get a little bit of a pushback here in GLD today, as gold finally, maybe, definitely maybe, pushing down here on GLD uh, for one. So before we go to Danielle, let me just check on the three earnings names uh, here. So FDX, FedEx, wow, man, that's a good little name there for FDX. Uh, huge move to the upside again, nice one. You don't see this name uh, jumping 11, 12, 13%, really unless it's on earnings. Their last earnings call was a complete disaster, and this one, we're all the way up here, taking all those levels out right now, up to 291 and change for FedEx on a buyback, so a $5 billion share, buy $5 billion share, not 5 billion shares, uh, purchase, repurchase back there, so a good one. That's really what's been helping. We saw Adobe with the 25 billion share uh, buyback as well. Looks like FedEx is gonna say uh, we'll do that as well. Uh, a little bit less though for FedEx. Um, all right, Lululemon now taking down lows, and I don't think we have Nike out yet. So, oh. Nike in my ear right now is out. So we'll get that um, with Danielle live, but it looks like Nike just kind of wants to dance around. I'm hearing it in my ear, a report of 77 cents for Nike. Um, we were expecting 69 cents. So that's good so far. We'll have to see what's happening right now. Nike just dancing around and not much happening, which leads me to our trader talk. Let's bring in Danielle. Hi, Ms. Shea, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you guys? I like that eat, sleep, trades. We're not doing too bad. We've had a busy couple of days here, and wow, we had a stare yesterday on that IPO and then Reddit today. Did you have a chance to look at any of those? Yeah, you know, looking at Reddit, I think it's exciting. I think it's gonna be a ticker that we're definitely gonna be able to trade. I typically like to avoid at Nike. least the first, first day, second day, maybe the third day, we'll see, but I generally like to give it a little bit more of a pattern. Uh, before I get into something like this, because, you know, I am a technical trader, but you know, what's also really exciting about it what? is typically about three weeks later, um, once there's enough volume, we start seeing options trading on it All as right. well. And since it's such a low price stock, uh, that is definitely something that'll make me interested. 
You know, we did see that explosion in ARM, you know, once the options started to get going and then they came out with their first earnings release and then boom to the upside. But um, I don't know, you're probably watching our podcast or listening to it anyways. If you're not, check it out because come over to my screen. I talked about my trade idea from last Friday was to buy Nike and right now, there goes Nike nicely done to the upside and we're cooking on this one, Danielle, because here's that talk that we mentioned. We said, hey, the Chinese are spending right now, higher CPI. We had their Chinese New Year and look what happens. They beat on sales. That's exactly what we're talking about. Now we'll wait to see if Nike can come through with a better guide. I hope so. Um, into the summer months, there's Nike up to 103, just a small 3%. But uh, any thoughts right now on Nike? I mean, Lulu's going one way, Nike's going the other. To me, maybe Lulu's more attractive because we're down that 7%. But any levels or any ideas here on Nike? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, Nike has about a seven, eight dollar expected move. And, you know, I think the thing that's most important about it is all of this resistance. So, I mean, you can see it's been in a downtrend. Great call, by the way. Um, and since it broke through resistance at 102 and currently, at least during the overnight session, it's breaking through this 105 area. If you could see a gap up above this 200 simple on the daily chart, above the two, above the 100 simple on the daily chart as well, if you could get up above 106, then there's a good likelihood for that to continue to the upside. Oh, we just wicked like 10, basically 105.88 right there, Danielle. So look at this, look at those wicks. Wow, you just nailed that 106. Let's see if we can get going on that one for sure. What about the downside? I mean, I was looking. I always like to look at even dollar levels, like a hundred and change uh, on that. But off earnings, obviously, I I would still think give it a couple days to breathe. Is that something that you'll generally do? I know you're trading some options and you like to maybe get out before earnings. But are these levels that maybe you would start to institute new call buying? Uh, uh, off of this kind of a report? So, I mean, it all depends what it does on the gap up the next day and if there's continuation. Because a lot of the time where you when you have a company like this that's in a downtrend on a daily chart and you have this area of resistance, if it just gaps and it's underneath these levels and it's stuck there, then in that instance, it's probably better for a short. So you definitely have to be careful if you're trying to be long Nike uh, when it's rallying right into this zone, because if it can't get through it, it's going down. And then if it breaks 100, that will not be good unless you're short, of course. So for me, it's all about the gap and whether or not it can gap up above 106 and stay there. Um, Danielle, we have some nice talk here in the chat. Mr. Nick Free, come over to my screen right here and we'll, I'll show this. He wants to say, thank you, Danielle Shea. He started trading options recently because of you and made a ton on Micron. So uh, there it is. Oh yeah, Danielle, let's talk about Micron. I actually tagged you this morning um, in this play and I, I was thinking that again, Micron with a little bit of more of an aggressive move than we had thought uh, coming out today. I wanted to see a continued rally into here but I think I'm getting smarter and learning about these things. I only wanted to take it if we broke above the pre-market high in here of 114. That never happened. We played a couple dip buy opportunities here in Micron. We, they didn't really hold, so we kept getting out in and around 110. So a negative day for me on Micron, but just a cup of coffee as it doesn't really do anything too exciting. So what do you see here for Micron? We didn't get that continuation, but it looks like it wants to hold in and around this 108, 110 area. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with you and great job managing that because that's what it's all about for me. Because when you have that overnight high, that creates an area of resistance. And I'm always looking at the 15 minute range, the first, you know, when the market opens. So, for example, like this gray area is going to be the overnight price action and the black area is going to be what happens after the market opens. In this case, you know, you see that key psychological area of resistance at 115 and that first 15 minute bar is down. So when you get that and you're not able to break through the high of the first 15 minute bar, that is when I do not jump in on a long after we've had a big break higher after earnings. So, yeah, I mean, with that one, I would say if you were in it before earnings, I mean, it's awesome. You did a great job. If you have the stock, I mean, great day for you for sure. As far as overall levels and what to do with it here, I would go back to a weekly chart and see if we could throw some fib zones on here. Looks like the first target was met around 115 and your next target overhead is going to be around 128. So I think there's still more upside in the stock, uh, if, you know, if you're just holding it on a, on a longer term basis, but the momentum trade just didn't come through to the upside today. 
Yeah, so do you use Fibonacci's quite often to look at uh, levels like that? Because we did have somebody on the show, the Fibonacci princess, you may know. Uh, Tammy, she uses those quite often. But is that something that you incorporate pretty much in all of your decisions? That's right. I love Trader Tammy and I love Fibonacci. So everything that I do has technical analysis incorporated and Fibonacci is absolutely the backbone of what I do. I mean, it's how I determine resistance areas. It's how I determine support areas. It's how I place all of my price targets for my options trades. Of course, I overlap those with my options chain looking for high open interest right. and volume, but Fibonacci is the basis of everything. All right. Um, people in the chat are asking me to ask you about DraftKings. Did we talk about that last week or a couple weeks ago? Because apparently your play on DraftKings is pretty hot fire. Um, it's been really great, man. We talked. Oh, yeah, that's right. We talked about March Madness, didn't we? Um, and that, We did. Right. And then we talked about um, all the gambling that happened. I mean, you were even watching the Super Bowl. We talked about uh, Miss T. Swizzle there as well. Uh, definitely creating some action in the... Should I know that that's what people call her? T. Sweezy and all that stuff? Uh, I have too many young kids but anyways DraftKings continues to be on a nice run taking out some levels are you still in the name what are you looking for with DraftKings yeah so when you look at DraftKings um, I've already taken profits on this one because it's already met my extension target so again you know I got Fibonacci on it and this is all about the squeeze guys this is the number one setup that I trade I combine it with my Fibonacci analysis to determine price targets but you know what you're looking for is you're looking for consolidation. The stock was consolidating. It had some major volume breakout signals, and that's exactly what you want to see. You want to see a break to a new high. I had a first target. Really, my first target was down here because it was at this area of resistance at 45. Secondary target at 47, but next target's 50. So yeah, I mean, we talked about this one on your show. I also yep. made a video about it on my YouTube channel as well. Uh, but Love trading the squeeze, love trading Fibonacci, and hopefully some of you were able to make some money on that. Yeah, it sounds like they were because the chat really liking that. Um, you mentioned that you love Fibonacci's, but you also, Danielle, love... Hey, I got to talk to Danielle. Where's the where's the, where's the one-on-one here? I'm going to ask her something. Sorry. There it is. Um, you mentioned loving Trader Tammy and loving Fibonacci's, but you also love Trader TV Live, right? Of course, of course. You are the absolute best. Oh, well, I thank you. Now I'm going to be blushing for a while. I need to hear that. Uh, no. All right. Um, Lululemon continuing the downside. But you made a lot of people also some good money on Microsoft. And again, we talk about this all the time. We'll talk about levels and ideas. But it's really, I got to give credit to a lot of the traders out there because pulling the trigger is really what it's all about. We talked a little bit about that on the show. And I'm going to ask you a little bit of, uh, it's not a personal question, but it's more the history of your trading. How long did it take you, Danielle, before you really started to get aggressive and maybe up the size, going from like one or two contracts, maybe to three or four, like five or six, or as many as you want? How long did it take you to sort of come up with your strategies and build a, a system that you're really confident with? You know, it's funny because I started trading when I was 25 and I didn't really have a good concept of risk because okay. when you're 25, you're kind of like, whoa, this is so much fun. So it's actually hilarious because I used to trade a lot more aggressively than I do now. And so when I first got into it, I said, you know, the first two years I paper traded actually. And that was how I got really confident with my setups and with my strategies. So I was using fake money for two years. After that, I graduated to the real thing and I started off really small. I just tried to make 50 bucks a day. You know, I was like, yeah. I, I want to make $50 a day. And then I upped it to 100, then 200, then 300. And so, if there was a time frame, maybe like five, six years ago, where I was very wild and crazy, and I would try to like double and triple my account. And now at this point, I try to go for like more easy winners, right. less stress, keep yes. blood pressure lower. Yes. So I actually use less size now than I used to five or six years ago. <laughs> right, but you're more, but that's true though, but you're more specific with your plays and learning. And I think that that's very important because we sit on a trading floor and it's kind of like the same learning experience, whether or not you're trading equities or options. Okay, uh, just real quick, Danielle, what do you want to talk about? I mean, there were some ideas that you had. Um, great call again on Microsoft. We want to go over that. You mentioned IBM. The floor is basically yours, but we always have so much fun that we're running out of time. So uh, let me throw it over to you. What else do you want to trade and what else do you want to talk about? 
Well, first of all, I just want to show you guys. I made a new video for you on YouTube. So Please. you can check that out at Trader Danielle, no underscore. Uh, I made a video about Microsoft and how I was trading it into 430 okay. using butterflies. So make sure you check that out. Um, but I want to give you some new trades here, of course. So I have a couple. I've got NVIDIA, IBM, Meta, and Amazon. So which one do you want? Um, repeat those again. Amazon, Meta... NVIDIA and IBM. Oh God, now if I pick the wrong one, everyone's gonna get mad at me. All right, let's go with NVIDIA. <laughs> okay, so, okay, I'm gonna do NVIDIA and ARM because, you know. Yep. So looking at NVIDIA, I know everybody's gonna tell me, uh, you know, you're crazy. There's no way it's gonna keep going higher, but you know what? I have the setup, I've got the squeeze. So if you look at this chart on a 195 minute chart, you know what you have after it made that new high at 974, it's come back, it's consolidating, it's hooking, it's making a little bit of a cup and handle pattern here. So I think we could trade NVIDIA up into 955 and then 1000. I love this slingshot momentum that I'm seeing. I love the incoming volume. I know this thing has been crazy and at some point I'm sure it's going to pull back, but I'm going to keep riding this one yep. uh, until it does. And for now, it's in a great upward trend. And then ARM, um, you talked about ARM and Reddit. I mean, I, I actually wanted to bring up another key point there because we talked about, and I talked about this on the show, but a lot of people get FOMO, like, oh my God, Reddit has this huge move and I don't want to miss it. Uh, but a lot of that action is just because we're in first day. We're going to have second day, third day. Some of the volume's going to come in. People's hands are going to get, um, you know, either lighter or heavier, depending on what positions they like. But I, as I look at ARM here, uh, this is the daily chart. So we came out uh, back in September and this is what I want to show everybody. Like we opened up at 55. We ran all the way to 68 that very next day. But then that cat came back and you thought it was a goner. But then it went all the way back into 50, 51 dollars, much lower, 10% lower than its IPO price. And we all knew the story about a low float and whatnot. And then you got to get my picture out of there. Sorry, uh, Ramin, because I'm trying to, there it is. So there's the move there upside, then we come back in, we hang around 50, we break below 50, we even get to $47, down 20 something percent since IPO. And then you sort of get going where you talked about, wait a little while for options and wait a little while for things to get going and then we start to blow up to the upside. So I'm pretty excited for Reddit for that exact reason. Let's keep looking at that one. But ARM, do it. Is there more upside or do you think that really soft bank, you know, we got to wait to hear about that sell, you know, what they're doing with ARM in their sale there? So, you know, first of all, you're dead right about everything that you said about IPOs and ARM. And this is why I always tell people you are not missing out when you're not buying an IPO the first day it comes on the market, because almost always it's going to fall for a couple weeks until it can find a low, find a bottom and find a catalyst like earnings. So, with ARM, you know, again, I know people are going to say you're crazy. It's already traded up to 164. How could you seriously trade it here? Well, because you have an IPO that bottomed out. You had two earnings reports in a row, specifically one with a breakaway gap that's now pulled back. It's consolidated in the squeeze. It has positive volume. I think you could trade it back up into 150. That would be my quote unquote easy target, the resistance okay. zone where it's already traded. And then after that, you know, 160 and, and above. So I think this is an aggressive trade, obviously, like it's a more recent IPO. Uh, but I know there's a lot of you guys out there that like some of these aggressive moves. I got to, um, so you, I'm going to do a favor for you and you're going to do one favor for me. Um, so Bears vs. Bulls, he's our moderator. He dropped the link to your YouTube in the chat. So I'm going to say thank you so much uh, to him for doing that. So uh, right there, good job on that one. But... I'm getting in trouble in the chat because, see, Danielle, you put me on the spot. You made me pick a name, and I knew no matter which one I picked, people would want another one. So I'm going to ask you for one more. They want to know about international business machines. And if we can talk about that, a nice little 3.5% uh, dividend yield. That's why I started buying this name, honestly, like probably 20 years ago, uh, because it was a dividend uh, grower, an aristocrat. IBM now is starting to take out some of these highs. What does Danielle share? think about IBM. So here's the thing. In my portfolio, I like to have a couple names that are a little bit more aggressive. And I like to have the more steady names like Amazon, like Microsoft. And then I also have to like to have stuff like this. It's not in the news every day. It's not going crazy. It's not a new IPO. 
but it has a great pattern. So when you look at IBM, I mean, it has this nice steady pattern ever since it bottomed out here last year. You've been in an upwards trend and you guys know that I love earnings and you can see last quarter it had a breakaway gap. Some of my favorite trades are on a bullish stock that has a nice trend that has a breakaway gap. It never comes back to fill and then it's pulling back and it's consolidating. Now, nobody's talking about this one right now because it's not really doing much, right? Like it's consolidating. It just recently made that high. So that's when you generally want to get in again. It's after it pulled back from making a new recent high, it's consolidating. You have an upside target that's a key psychological value. I love using these numbers in the options market because I can set up a butterfly. So I like having some of these under the radar names. Right now I have a butterfly, 190, 200, 210, and I'm just targeting this $200 price point on this name. So you know, you got to mix up the kinds of tickers that you're trading yep, because you don't want to only be focused on like NVIDIA or an AMD, because if you wake up, there's a big gap down, it's a little bit rough for you. So I like to mix up the risk. Yeah, for sure. And one of the original AI plays, I mean, they had Watson on Jeopardy. We talked about this like 20 years ago and it was destroying everybody. So shout out to Watson um, and uh, IBM. So. Danielle, traders stay late, that's our hashtag, and you definitely did today, I wanna to thank you so much for that. I wanna make sure that everybody checks you out at Trader Danielle, both on X, and then it's on the bottom of our screen right now, and on YouTube, and let's get that YouTube channel pumped up. She's putting out free videos, guys. Go over there and have a quick look at her YouTube page, Trader Danielle. You have it up right now, let's flash it one more time. There it is, so um, yeah. Everything's groovy, man. I really like those colors on there. Go check her out for more information on options. Hey, we heard from the chat. You've made the people some money, so let's go support Danielle Shea. Thank you, Miss Danielle. Thank you, guys. I love you. I'll see you next week. Thank you. See you, Danielle. There it is. That's Trader Talk. I mean, we just keep rolling them out. I mean, day after day, we're bringing the guests with some hot fire. I want to thank absolutely all of you for joining. And I mean, what again, another great episode there. 2,500 of you are right here right now. So let me do my best with the roll call. All right, often imitated, never duplicated. I mean, all these guys on the show, I heard Adara do a roll call, was really good. Sharif does a great roll call, but let's go uh, and let's see who's here right now with us. I always got to shout out my main guy before we even go on here. Shout out to you, Bears vs. Bulls, man. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Uh, again, oh, there it is. What's up? Let's get home. Okay, hey, my wife, what's going on? She's in the chat as well. What's up, Marissa? Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'll be home very, very soon. Thank you to Rob. Thank you to for Oscar Plays. Yo, what's up, Chef Joe? Yo, Chef Joe, man, as soon as I'm in New York, we're going to have that steak together. Shout out to you, Chef Joe. What's up to DK, Mike Breeze? What's up to Zion, Igor, Oscar plays? To the screen, I got to show this. Uh, what's up to JTK? What's up to Silver Do Blue? Lava. Hey, sh oh, oh God, what's up, my wife? Uh, Kling Daddy. Uh, what's up, Lass? What's up, Sam Yip? Uh, everybody, man, everybody that's here. Piper, what's up, Danielle? What's up, Eddie R, for profit? Everybody's here right now. Igor's in the building. Robert's in the building. All right, that's roll call. Thank you so much. It's been a fantastic day. And if I take any more time, I may be in trouble. Look, sticky note review is what it is we'll keep I have, a, I have a typo somewhere oh there's a typo not on the rundown oh no he's not talking to me I thought there was a typo there thank you so much for watching we had a great guest I want to thank trader Danielle for coming through all those options I'm happy with those IBM plays we like that but before we go wait a second let's just look over what some of those earnings were and I know Marissa I, I'm not delaying on purpose I just want to review these quickly one I am not Ramin uh, nice move to the downside right now for I, for Nike. Let's see if that 106 can hold. Uh, not happy with that as we own some Nike shares. Uh, Lululemon, oops, L-U-L-U -L -U, uh, right there. Whoa, -oh, Lululemon to the downside. This could be a possibility uh, to buy some right now. Lululemon down 8%. We'll see if that goes SSR for trading tomorrow. And look what we're bouncing into. Oh no, not the 200 period moving average where we possibly might want to buy some shares for Lululemon. And the big winner here today is going to be, wow, FedEx now 14%. FedEx doubling expected move right there. We did it again. 
It's another market recap show. Traders and wives apparently stay late. So I want to say thank you to everybody. I'll be seeing you soon, Marissa, and I'll be seeing everybody else tomorrow. Rise and shine at 8.30. I have no idea who's going to host with me. Does it really matter? It's Trader TV Live. We're here tomorrow, and I will see you all then at 8.30. Have a great evening. Give the loved ones you love a big hug. I'll see you in the morning. Ciao.